well, well, let's gather around the Ryans and play the waiting game together. As it was once famously said on The Simpsons, the waiting game sucks. Let's play Hungry Hungry Hippos. Uh, good evening. We are awaiting the details on a Noah Hannafin trade. There's Ryan Pike of Flames Nation. Are you our, uh, what would we call you? Uh, uh, fearless leader and uh, website editor. What's your job title? Uh, benevolent I, dictator. What do you've got? I think my official title on my paperwork is managing editor, but I mean, right. I, I, I do what I'm told at this point. Benevolent dictator, managing editor, kind of rhymes, whatever. Uh, you know me, it's Pinder from Barnburner and or Afterburner and or that guy that's always uh, got a beer in his hand at that community rink. Uh, we're waiting on the Noah Hannafin deal. Okay, it, uh, Noah Hannafin's going to Vegas. It's been reported by numerous people, numerous insiders, not just people. We know that. What we don't know is really much else. Uh, Darren Dreger has noted that Daniil Miromanov is coming back to the Calgary Flames in the deal, but my guess is that this is not a central figure. He is 26. He is finishing his third season of professional hockey in North America, and he is set to become a Group 6 UFA this summer, Ryan, which means he technically is an RFA, but when the season's done, he will not have amassed, amassed 80 games in the league, and he's accrued three seasons, which will immediately, poof, turn him into a UFA. So I would very much be betting heavily this is not a central figure in the deal, so much of one of multiple pieces coming back, uh, and certainly not the most valuable or biggest piece coming back to the Calgary Flames. Yeah, and you know, v Vegas thinks they can win another Stanley Cup. You don't do this kind of deal if you think don't think that. And according to our pals at Cap Friendly, before this deal, they're at 49 contracts. So they'd mm. be maxed out if the Flames weren't taking a contract back. We obviously don't at have all one, the pieces yeah. here yet. Yeah. So just reading the tea leaves, uh, I I would imagine the Flames aren't building a, a trade return for Noah Hanifin off of a 26-year-old pending Group 6 okay. UFA. 29 so, games in the league. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's probably a piece of it, but it can't be the yeah. only piece of it. And, you know, like you said, the, the fun part of this is the waiting game. I, I will say this. Uh, things that I know for a fact, Craig Conroy is not on the road trip. He's uh, his, him and the brain trust stayed in town to okay. uh, to do these types of things. So uh, and trade calls take a while, especially, you know, if you're doing a three way trade call, you're essentially doing a trade call for three trades. Right. Uh, and, and that's so, what we've seen when these deals have gotten done. For example, the Chris Tanev deal was actually a three team deal with the New Jersey eating half of what was left on the Tanev deal after the Flames ate half. And so Calgary, New Jersey trade call, New Jersey, Dallas trade call, Calgary, Dallas, three separate interactions were made. The other thing that can take time and hang things up, Piker, if there's a player coming back and there is some sort of trade protection, I don't know where Vegas is or if they're in their air. I'll look at their schedule here, but sometimes you'll need approval from the player and or someone to waive, or it's just, I want to call the player before uh, we fax this thing in. So yeah. let's, let's and go to standby. I don't know if any or which of, of those uh, or see all the above D none of the above uh, are, are happening right now. And also, you know, one of the things that have been, uh, you know, in vogue with, basically every team is adding uh, conditions to draft picks. And so a lot of time, you know, you'll be hashing out conditions, you know, making sure the wording is right on the trade call. So that save, you know, hypothetically a season gets wiped out uh, because of COVID and somebody has a certain number of goals and certain number of games, you can do those kind of things. Like the, the that was as, the as, James Neal trigger, as, wasn't it? As yeah. stupid as stupid as it sounds, the the league basically went to sort of the the wording of the clause in that case when they had to to intervene, and yeah. they essentially had to suss out Framer's intent from that kind yeah. of clause. So, so that now we're getting deep into CBA minutia. This is why we bring Ryan Pike in, and why we also have stocked the fridge with uh, Barnburner Blondes here at the studios. Ryan, <laughs> um, buckle up. So yes, there's lots of things that could be uh, hanging this thing up. Stand by. Delicious. Uh, tell your liquor store favorite bar and restaurant they got to get the origin beers in. That'll chit chat today. Things are happening, Pike. You're going to be happy. But um, even something like uh, a trade clause, or, or remember famously the Monahan deal, how many conditions there were to go through and have that worded properly. And okay, A, B, C, D, E, F. 
like the number of conditions on that Monaghan trade where the Flames are sending a first to Montreal, it became very complicated because Florida had a first rounder in play. And oh, if we finish in the bottom 10, that's protected. Then it slides to the next year. And then if it's that year, then that one can't go to the Flames. It's got to be this year. And if it's that year, then Montreal's got to pick between this one and that. Like the, the, I guess the, the cascading effect of all some of these conditions can make this a very arduous process at the league office, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I I have been told by folks I know who works the league that the the Montreal Calgary trade call from Monaghan was for a two pieces going to one place for futures. One of the longer trade calls they've had because of the, the uh, same thing. With, you know, the 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 Matthew Kachuk one was another really long one where you know the the league did not know how to process a uh, a sign and trade. Uh, the nice thing here is because yeah. Hannafin's being traded before the trade deadline. Uh, the, essentially, the rule is. If you're on a team as of you can, you can only sign an eight year deal with a team. If you're on their roster as of the most recent trade deadline. So if okay. the flames traded, if the flames traded Hannafin to Vegas, he could not sign a contract extension tomorrow. He could sign a contract extension the day after the deadline, but not tomorrow. So, Essentially, you know, would they be of, eligible for eight years? He would be eligible for eight years if he signed okay. on Saturday. Yeah, uh, that's what happened. So with that's Hampus interesting. Lindholm. So, to, to, I guess uh, if you finish that thought, let's back up and go big picture here. Well, that's what well, the we saw last, uh, two years ago with uh, Hampus Lindholm signing his eight-year contract in Boston, where he was traded yeah. by Anaheim right. and then uh, at the, on deadline day, and then two days later they they filed the the eight-year contract with the league office. So something right. hypothetically could happen with Vegas in this situation based on them doing the trade when they're doing it there. So there would not be a need for a sign and trade with the flames. Right. Uh, it would merely be a trade and sign, but having the ability to more or less hash that out beforehand really gives you the opportunity to, uh, if you're the flames, get a better return. And if you're Vegas, I mean, it hedges your, it hedges your bets and lowers your risk. So, you know, this is the kind of situation where, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of complexities for lack of a better term. Yeah, for sure. And then just to back things up a bunch, we spent a lot of yesterday's Barnburner show talking about what would you put on the table for Noah Hannafin to sign and stay in Calgary if, you know, that slim chance of a re-signing still existed. What what would the money look like? What would the deal look like? You know, the player would obviously get a full move at that point. Right now he's got an eight-team list. Where would he not want to go? We're hearing a lot of stuff being leaked about Tampa Bay in the last two weeks, probably from his camp, his agent and company, because, hey, people have favorite places. Uh, maybe he's not willing to sign an extension right away. Maybe you go somewhere and win and you say, geez, this is way better than I ever thought it could be. Absolutely, I'll re-up here. And oh, by the way, Vegas is a tax-free state just like Florida. And then on top of that, you bring up Lindholm, who happens to be, I think, maybe the best trade comp for Noah Hannafin in the last few years because A, he kind of is a 2-3. He's not quite an elite power play guy. He got moved for a first and two seconds and then was immediately extended and he was a guy that was an expiring contract that got moved to the deadline. There's there's a lot there. Yeah. So what would you, before you heard anything today, if I said, Pike, by Friday at 1 p.m., Hannafin's going to Vegas, what would you expect the deal to look like? What's the framework? Where would you go? I would still say you'd want first a, a good prospect and probably a, a U24, U25 defenseman or center i think the ideal based on the the work that that uh, craig conroy has done to this point you know adding uh grushnikov adding brushevich adding you know yoni yermo i i think you'd want to go go for a center and so if it was like say you know for for vegas i mean they have uh matthias sap who uh has been really well regarded by ohl scouts for the last couple of years he you know he's really taken a big step so hypothetically I would say you'd want probably as a framework Vegas first uh, of one of the Vegas's young centers like Edstrom or Sapa Valiv. And then if they have someone in Henderson that you like that you can parachute in to help out the Wranglers, I think yeah. that'd be sort of the, uh, and that kind of feels like Niramanov right now. He's, he's giving you some depth. I mean, Miramanov, you know, I think the big challenge with him is like, he's changed positions. He's, bounced around a lot of different leagues. He's had uh, a lot of complexities uh, in his development between injuries before a lot of other things. So I think that's that's one of the, the big problems with really judging him by his his boxcar stats because yeah. he's a guy who can play in the National Hockey League, but it's just a question of what the hell is he at the National Hockey level. Yeah. And he's played so little the last few seasons that it's really difficult to figure out precisely what he is.
Uh, welcome to it. We are waiting for the return on the Noah Hannafin trade. He is going to Vegas. Uh, it sounds like Daniil Miramanov is one of what we'd expect to be numerous pieces coming back to the Calgary Flames. We don't know a lot about this deal. We'd expect the Flames will retain salary. Uh, if there's a third party, that obviously would uh, complicate things as well. And let's get back to the deal in a moment. But first, Ryan, we have some breaking news regarding Marty Pospisil and his hearing with the Department of Player Safety. We do. Uh, Marty Pospisil is on the road trip, but he's not playing a damn game. He's, uh, right. he's suspended for all three games, uh, much like uh, our friend from TSN, uh, Salem Valji. Uh, Ma you know, Mar Marty Pospisil will be a spectator for the next three games, uh, three-game suspension. He's eligible to return on Tuesday night when the Flames return home. But uh, so if you're someone going, damn, I really want to see some Matty Coronado, uh, you know, right now, what we were told from uh, from Morning Skate was Connor Zary is not on the road trip. He's considered day to day, but he's on the yep. IR. He's not on eligible. IR. He cannot come back. He's not eligible to play until Sunday night and he's not on the road trip. So he yeah. won't be playing. So it just sounds like it's Coronado time, boys. It's uh, yeah, we're going to see at the very least three games of Matt Coronado playing in the top nine. and. Uh, We'll see what he has. I, I, this probably isn't the circumstances that they're hoping to see, but you know, to you know, I don't think I'm telling tales at school when I say that every time I've seen you know Craig Conroy in person in the last six weeks, eight weeks, he's first thing he brings up is, "Oh boy, just see how Coronado is doing in the AHL. Damn, mm -hmm. I wish we had a spot to put him in." So for the time being, they have a spot to put him in, and so it's gonna be really interesting to see how that works out, especially with three road games in three pretty tough buildings to play on the road in. It's been a traditionally nightmarish and treacherous trip for uh, even very good teams. I know the Oilers got thumped there either last year or two years ago passing through. They're, they're all very good teams. You consider them all cup content contenders. Tampa, Carolina, and Florida, not in that order. It's three and four nights. It's a back-to-back. -back. And yeah, I think you're going to get a lot more top nine opportunities for Jacob Pelche and certainly Matthew Coronado as well. Okay, uh, if you're new here, welcome to Flames Nation. Barn Burner is our main program. We are essentially live two hours a day around 10, uh, 10 Barn Burner time, 10, 15, to about 1230 every day. And all 82 Flames games, we do a post-game show called Afterburner. If you're new, we're seeing a lot of eyeballs here. Give us a subscribe. Give us a like. Tell your friends, unless you don't like it, they keep your mouth shut. And uh, five stars, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, thanks a bunch for being here. And, this uh, is I'll a interject. very large number of people watching and waiting. A lot of interest around the steel pike. And we got the best comment section, uh, the best live chat section in in the biz. So is that right? Uh, if, if you if you like what we're doing here and uh, you want to share us some love, do it in the in the chat in the comment section. And if there's stuff that you want to see us do on uh, on our channels, you know we're always open to suggestions. No guarantee we'll do it, but I mean, you know we we have one thing that everybody loves, and we want to find out what else you want. So. Yeah, fair enough. And also, just while we're talking about it, uh, Ryan Pike was with us. I didn't know the jumper, numbers have jumped since we started. Uh, the managing editor editor of FlamesNation.ca. Busiest month uh, in the history of the, of the site in February. A short month last month. Uh, booming times in the writing about the Flames business, Ryan. Oh, Lord. There's just too much news. I'm just... So what are we going to talk about after the eighth? Are we just going to talk about all these uh, these new these new players? And hold on, my eyes are way too dry right now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been oh, a lot of screen Lord. time. I I would believe that. So oh. if you'd asked me about a potential return for Hannafin, uh, the package would center around a first round pick, a high end prospect, and a roster player. And if you really want to get the extra squeeze. Look at the Lindholm deal in with Vancouver, where they not only got a very good prospect in Hunter Brustevich, they also got, I believe, Yoni Yurko, the Finnish defenseman prospect as well. And they had another conditional pick added, which is very in vogue these days. Hey, if your team wins the cup or gets to the conference final or gets to the Stanley Cup final, we'll take a fourth, we'll turn it into a third, we'll throw in another third, whatever it may be. If this was a four or five piece return for Craig Connor that included maybe someone to fill a hole until the summer a toolsy player that he might be bullish on as a depth player down the road, a young prospect, a high pick and a conditional pick that wouldn't be outlandish, would it? No. And I think I'm just going to wipe my eyes like a fool this entire time. Live radio folks for live <laughs> podcasting. Yeah. I think the, the big thing is, you know, we, we saw because Vancouver basically got told, Hey, Okay, we're gonna take if this is their best offer, we're gonna go take it to the other to the other teams and say, hey, take it or leave it. You know, this is the time to poop or get off the pot. And yeah. I'll give I'll give Craig Conroy a lot of credit. He's you know, we've seen some pretty nice returns from the guys they've gotten so far, and we've seen, you know, some pretty decent work done. 
And just the idea of, you know, he's willing to a wait till a market to develop. And then B once a market does develop, he just goes in and goes, okay, boys do it now or you're losing out. And it kind of feels like the Vegas of it all. Well, it makes complete sense to all of us because Vegas is, you know, in on everyone. Yeah. Just the idea that, they managed to, you know, we heard about Florida and Tampa Bay pretty much nonstop. You know, every time Frank was on with you guys on Mondays, he was always, yep. you know, banging the Tampa Bay drum. And then Vegas comes in like a, a the proverbial thief in the night and goes, no, we'll take him. And that makes me wonder what <laughs> what were the other teams offering that yeah. made Craig Conroy go, hot damn, we're doing it in division again. Yeah. Especially, you know, this is a team in Vegas that the Flames have never done a deal with. They've you know, arguably gone out of the way to not do deals based on how much a lot of these other things they could have been doing would have made sense for Vegas. So, you know, I think for me, that's that's the most fascinating part of this. Sorry, I've got uh, Daniil Miraman of highlights that have just been posted on our Flames Nation social media accounts. Jack, if you want to grab those, we can start playing those. Here's a look at one of the pieces we believe is coming back to Calgary per TSN and our NHL insider, Darren Dreger, who we will have tomorrow on the show. Miramanov's a very toolsy defenseman, heavy shot, not known for great defending so much as uh, good power play, good offensive mind, and as you said, a converted forward. Yeah, he's he's one of those guys where he's he's got some size. He's played, you know, our, our pal Danny Austin of Post Media mentioned on social that he played for part of a season in the Q with uh, Jacob Pelche. He's played in the K. He's played uh, pretty much all over the place. He's. I think the big challenge for him is like, he's sort of been a man without a home for a little while and pretty much until he got to Vegas where, you know, he's been, you know, a, a big piece of what they're doing in Henderson and he just hasn't quite been able to carve out a, a full-time NHL gig, but you know, he's someone that, you know, the, the same flame scouting crew that saw a lot of Braden Pahal went, okay, we can work with that. Yeah. I yeah. think a lot of those same eyes that saw Pahal can see a lot of things they like out of Miramanov and go, okay. I mean, you know, if, Again, he's probably more of a guy who's included to make the contracts work kind of guy yeah. yep. more than he is like a let's build the trade around this. I, I don't think in a year's time we'll be going talking about the, you know, the the Daniil Merrimanoff blockbuster. But, you know, he's, he you know, it's not like he's like you threw skates on or, you know, OK, that's a bad example because Pinder's, Pinder's actually half decent. But it's not like you threw skates on, on me and Boom and said, OK, you're uh, you're going to Calgary and to, to balance out the, the contracts here. He's he's a legit prospect he's he's just ha one of those guys that just had uh you know we, we talk about example marty pospisil uh yep. speaking of the devil. marty pospisil had like the worst injury luck in the history of the world like he had concussion issues he had shoulder like he basically every time he got into any kind of a major collision unfortunately the guy ended up on the wrong side of it through dumb luck and Thankfully, he's managed to stay healthy this year. And lo and behold, he's a full-time NHL or an arguably a pretty important one. Miramanov yeah. might not have possible upside, but he's had possible bad luck. And if mm. he can get some consistency and, you know, be in a, in a place where he can just sort of do his thing and build himself up, there's definitely some upside there. The other thing that happens, Ryan, is if they're not taking an NHL roster defender back, and let's we, pretend we don't know Miramanov's involved, they're going to have to put some on waivers and send them down to the minors potentially. And that's kind of what we saw with Joel Hanley, who the Flames picked up off waivers. It was Tana being activated and put on their roster that forced them to make a move. And so it wasn't part of the deal, but it was related. This is part of the deal. And I also think it is related. You're not going to carry nine defensemen here if you're Vegas. And yeah. let's rewind a little bit. It was the injury to Mark Stone being ruled out for the season that allowed them to open up a little more cap space here. This is the second trade they've made. Uh, they added Anthony Mantha, I think a pretty sneaky good ad yesterday. Very big, highly potent offensive player that can score. Is he perfect? No. Do I feel like Vegas is the right place for him to come in and have success? I kind of do. I, I really like their Barbashev pickup last year, and now they take a bad situation, which, what, a ruptured spleen from Mark Stone, and they're going to turn that money into what looks like Noah Hannafin. And oh, by the way, Alec Martinez, their second pair left shot D-man, his money comes off the books at the end of the year. It's his contract's up. This makes a lot of sense for Vegas. Uh, without knowing the full return, you still understand why and how they're adding Noah Hannafin. Yeah, and you know, they're, let's be honest, if you were a playoff bound team, especially uh, a team, you know, you, you, we've seen Noah Hannafin play really well against 
Edmonton. We've seen him play very well against Vancouver. Let's be honest. We've seen Noah Hansen play far more good games than bad as a member of the Cavalry Flames. But he's yeah. he's had a great year and he's been really good in those games against, you know, the, the types of teams that Vegas will need to get past. Yep. And he plays the type of game that Vegas likes to play. He can play heavy. He can play fast. He can play, you know, he can jump in and be a PK guy. He can, he can be a, a contributor. I don't think he can run your power play. We nope. saw him try no, and the not, and Theodore there. No, nope, but you right. don't need him to yeah. like, that's, that's the nice thing. He's, he's yep. the kind of guy that, you know, we, I would say he's kind of backlandy in the sense that if Michael Backlund's your best center, you've got depth issues. If Michael Backlund's in your three spot, you're doing pretty you're well. Yeah. And that's if, if you have enough good defensemen that Noah Hanifin or Chris Tanev is playing on your second or third pairing, you're just Goodness. doing good. And yeah. this is, this is the time of year that you want to make the moves to make that kind of depth happen. Let's rewind prior to the draft last summer in Nashville. You and I were covering it for Flames Nation. Craig Conroy, it was his first draft as the general manager after Brad Treliving parted ways with the club at the end of last season. We've now seen Conroy, who has dealt a hand that had seven pending free agents, deal with all but one of them. And that one has a unique enough set of circumstances that it doesn't have the, this, the amount of fear and caution around it that a pending UFA normally would. In chronological order, he trades Tyler Toffoli ahead of the draft in Nashville. They get Igor Sharangovich, who has two years left on his contract. They immediately signed him to that deal, uh, versus the one year before UFA status for Toffoli. They also get a third rounder, which is Suniev, the kid playing at UMass, who's having a really nice freshman season. Very it nice. It was Backland. Sorry, go ahead on Suniev. I know you've been watching him closely. Uh, 25 points in 31 games. First power play, first uh, first line left wing. He's, you know, in terms of shooter. offensive impact, he's a shooter. He's he's worse offensive numbers than Gaudreau in his freshman year, but sure. much better than Jankowski. So if you're going to argue, you know, what end of the spectrum he's going to be, I don't think he'll quite be. Between uh, those pillars, Gaudreau. probably but, fine. <laughs> and, and, you know, let's, let's, if we, you know, all due respect to Mr. Jankowski, Mark Jankowski's turned into a, you know, pretty good pro. He's had a really good pro career. Still up and, and down. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it's if you can get somebody who you think can play games and Greg Carville at UMass, you know, really raves about uh, Suniev's ability to learn and his willingness to learn. Like, he, he does everything except check because that wasn't really something you're asked to do in the BCHL on Penticton with the when you're Harlem Globe kind of team. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He had so, a monster year in the BC League uh, last year. Um, okay, so that was the, the Foley deal. They extend Michael Backlund, who was a free agent. That was a big back and forth over the summer. Do I want to stay? Do I want to go? You can't help but think the letter C on his chest had something to do with that as well. Not the flaming one, but the captain C. We're talking about Zadorov gets moved for a third and a fifth in the fall. He's been Zadorov in Vancouver. That felt like a reasonable return, if not overwhelming nor disappointing. Then you had the big one. The Elias Lindholm deal saw five pieces return, including Vancouver's first rounder this season and Hunter Brustevich, who's having a monster year with Kitchener, I believe, of the uh, Ontario Hockey League, uh, looking like a 90-point pace. And you had noted today on the show, at even strength, he's a point-per-game player as a defenseman, never mind the power play wizardry. Yeah, and he's, he's again, he's the kind of guy that – you know, you'll you'll need someone to sort of either a teach him a bit of the the defensive game, or b someone to cover his ass defensively. Yeah. But you know, he's he's kind of like Oliver Shillington in that you know he can move. He's got that vision. He's got that that extra little bit of aggressiveness with the puck that makes him really dangerous. And you know, he's taken a gigantic step in the OHL. He's gonna be by all accounts like a first team All Star in the OHL. He's gonna be up yep. there for their their defenseman of the year award. And you know, he's one of those guys that I would not be shocked if after the trade deadline we hear an announcement about a new deal for him. Uh, I think there's a couple of deals probably in the drawer ready to to come out and uh, be filed with the league. But you know he's he's a, he's going to be a they hope a big piece of what they do here in the future. And and correct me if I'm wrong. Late birthday in his draft class means he is eligible for the American League next year. Is that right? Yeah, both uh, so it, he um, and Hansek. Him, Hansek, and Lipinski are all uh, eligible for the the AHL next year. Interesting, interesting. Uh, we're waiting on the hall for the Noah Hannafin trade. If you're just joining us, we got about 7,500 people watching live right now, which is quite something. We don't know more than you do at this point. We know that uh, Daniil Miramanov has been reported as one of the pieces coming back to Calgary. We're both of the belief that's not a central piece so much as, eh, it's a guy. We'll take a look at him. He's a UFA this summer. Got some tools. He's 26. 
This isn't a kid. This isn't the next captain. This isn't a pillar of the franchise, but we'll take a look. And Vegas is probably going to have to shake loose a contract and or a D-man off the roster. Hannafin will go there, I imagine, with money retained. Pike, has anyone confirmed that that you've seen as an insider? I th- I want to say LeBron or, or Dreger had it at 75% retained out there. So that means so there's a third sounds, party involved. It sounds, yeah. like a, it sounds like a multi-team deal, but you know, there's we basically had that initial flurry where everyone just started refreshing their Twitter or X, or the hell we're calling it now. And then now we're just sort of, you know, just going, all right, let's uh, let's riff and fill some time here until hopefully something comes through. But you know, prop my guess is we probably won't find out much of anything until uh, the flames tweet drops announcing welcome to Calgary, Daniil Miramanov. <laughs> Yeah, and again, that that might not be the headline of the tweet. It might be uh, "Thanks for your service, Noah T- Noah Hannafin," and uh, a first or something like that. That'll be more of the central stuff. But uh, there you go. Um, the other deal that was completed earlier this week: Chris Tanev is off to the Dallas Stars. Tanev probably a great case to be made for the best free agent signing Brad you're living here had as a general manager. He came in coming off a just okay year in Vancouver. It was some COVID weirdness around that time. TJ Brody's money was coming out and boy, if this guy can stay healthy, he's a good player. And he really helped Quinn Hughes in that sensational rookie year. He was very durable here. Sadly, uh, not the, uh, the battle of Alberta in the playoffs was standing a very durable Chris Tanev. And they also get to turn him into a second round or a conditional third. If Dallas can get to the cup final and Dennis Grishnikov, who has already reported to the Wranglers, a second rounder of a few years ago, he sort a, of he's, feels like a gritty third pair banger. If I can play a few games and the early results are pretty promising zero points, but he's, you know, he's a, a physical guy. People I know who scouted the team over the weekend, you know, said exactly what he's expecting to be. I think, you yeah. know, he's, he's, you know, going to be a guy that, uh, you know, leans on the opposition so that Jeremy Poirier can be Jeremy Poirier. And that's kind of what they were hoping for. And, yeah. you, know, the, the, you know, he, he's part of the cavalry for the Wranglers, so to speak. Uh, you know, they got him back. They, they just got Mark Pissick back. They're getting uh, Jeremy. Po- they just got Jeremy Poirier back. They still don't yeah. have uh, Ilya Solovyov or, uh, Brady Lyle, but they're two injuries returns away from being fully healthy and very quietly having a pretty stacked blue line. If everybody is 100% healthy and you know, the, the, who knows the, the, the playoff math is against the flames, but uh, the boys wearing W's on their chests. Yeah. They're, they're pretty much shoe ins at this point. And it's been a really think- nice three year run there. And even with, you know, certainly Wolf's on the backbone of it, but the coaching change we know is, uh, Mitch Love went to the, the Washington coaching staff at the NHL level as an assistant. I mean, it's been a really impressive run for the uh, the top affiliate of the Flames the last three years. Yeah, and especially you know they you know I, I was joking with someone some folks on the coaching staff just the idea that you know they've done a good enough job that their best players are being you know airlifted to the NHL because of the the, the way the Flames are doing things and they keep doing things. Uh, you know I've Adam last year Adam Klapka came in for his first year of North American Pro. Yep. He was kind of okay in the first half and then was almost a point per game in the second half. Uh, William Stromgren is doing his best uh, Klapka impression in the second half of this season. He's had I believe uh, twelve points in his last sixteen or seventeen games. He's he's been the beneficiary of all these guys getting called up. And as a result, you know, William Stromgren, you know, I, I know folks have always, especially since, you know, Logan Stan Coben's made the NHL already and looks so damn good. Yeah, uh, awesome. the, the Flames took Stromgren for a lot of reasons, his size, his ability to play a pro style game, his ability, you know, his, his lack of, of he doesn't have a lot of bounces in, in his game. He's just very steady. Uh, and they're starting to see that. And, you know, if it, he, if, you know, you're always going to bet on a kid who's like six, two or six, three and 200 pounds and playing against grown ass men at 18. Right. And, you know, he's starting to, to bear fruit. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure if you're talking to flames brass, they go, uh, he likes Stan Coven still, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, everyone likes Stan Coven. It's easy to like the kid who's, who's scoring a lot, but they're both good players, just completely different styles. That is fair. Uh, we talked about the seven UFAs. Craig Conroy inherited number six is Hannafin, who's off to Vegas. We're still waiting on that return. If you're just joining us here on Flames Nation on this emergency barn burner podcast, we'll have Boomer joining us as soon as we get uh, word on the official deal, what it entails. Uh, very limited information at this point. I'm subbed. Retention, third party involved, we believe, and Daniil Miramanov coming back. The other free agent is Oliver Shillington, uh, Ryan, and, and we know his long battle with mental health and the extended leave of 20 or so months away from the team. He's looked very good. 
And based on how up and down this thing was, where he showed up for camp and then left again right at the beginning uh, of camp after training uh, and sort of like getting your check in, let's do the physicals. There was a lot of people that thought him returning would never, ever happen again. And not only has he done that, he's actually looked really good since the All-Star break and seems to be coming to his in, into his own. What do you foresee happening? Because both the team and the player have talked about the other party with a lot of respect and thankfulness on Chillington's part for the patience of the Flames, for the time and space that he needed to sort of bubble that off and not let any sort of rumors get out there. And from the Flames' perspective, they've always liked this kid. They've invested a pick in him. The last pick of the second round way back when, a lot of developmental time in the organization. What does this new deal look like? He is a UFA this summer. He's not going to make it a free agency. Yeah, I don't think so either. He's 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 going to sign. It feels like that uh, that'll be a, a high priority for for Craig Conroy once uh, the dust settles. There's obviously a lot of balls in the air for the Flames, but you know they've made it really clear to the player that they really value him, respect him, and you know they 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 have a really high opinion of the player and the person, and the feeling is mutual. My guess is we'll see probably something short term. My gut says probably a one to two year deal at more or less the same cap that he's at now. Uh, he missed that two to three ish. He missed the first season of his of his contract uh, okay. because of all the stuff he was going through. And you know, if if you tell me that okay, they're just gonna tack on another year and say let's see how how you're playing in a year and figure out what a fair deal is for you long term, I think that would work. But you know, I, I just think if you're if you're the Flames or if you're Shillington. I don't know exactly know what the framework of a long-term deal is because after a lot you, know, you, you kind of want to figure out what he is. And the nice thing is he looks like Oliver Shillington, but by the time the season's over, he'll have played maybe 40 games. And okay. it's pretty difficult to figure out exactly what he is outside of good after 40 games. So once uh, I think if he signs a one-year deal, he'd be eligible to sign a, a longer extension as of January 1st. And that kind of feels like the play here, uh, punt it down the road, say, you know, we're all friends here. Let's talk in six months and see how you're yeah. feeling, how yeah. your play is. And then, you know, more importantly, figure out comparables. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, is that he's primarily played until the last couple of days uh, as a third pair with Pahal this year, which is a different role than the one he played two and a half seasons ago to one and a half seasons ago, where he was paired with Chris Tanev. It looked great as a top four guy, but Chris Tanev's not here and he's no longer likely going to be placed with Pahal and he will be playing some bigger minutes. There's still a lot to figure out about what Oliver Shillington is as a second pair defenseman, which I believe he will be post deadline, especially Tanev gone. But now with Tanev and gone, I mean, you could argue he's their third best defenseman. There's going to be a lot of uh, increased usage, ice time, and responsibility for him. Quick thought as we wait for the return on Noah Hannafin here on Flames Nation. Craig Connor has added a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth in all those aforementioned deals. There's more coming. He's already replaced essentially a full draft class, Ryan. Uh, the full body of work will be uh, interesting to look at when the dust is settled, 1 o'clock on Friday. And I do believe we have an update. Jack, what have you got for us on uh, the, the holdup here? Eric Francis of Sportsnet saying the involvement of a third party offering up salary retention uh, is what's holding up this deal. So if people aren't familiar is. with that, Ryan, walk us through why salary retention is important and what a third party means. Well, I mean, you know, if we, the, the Vegas Golden Knights infamously don't have a lot of cap space, and when they have it, they don't want to use up all of it on one guy. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, they, they just made the trade for Anthony Mantha. They, you know, if they... If the Flames are the only one retaining salary, the cap hit for uh, Noah Hannafin drops to. I'm going to do math on the fly here. Two point four five. Two point four is he's four nine five, so he's two point four. So it's less than four, less than two and a half, but more than two and a quarter. But yeah. very. But if you find someone else to retain, as Dallas did with uh, the Chris Tanev deal, cut that in half again, and then you're getting a Noah Hannafin like a prorated million bucks, million and change. Yeah, at twenty five percent of the salary or seventy five percent retained, that's the best case for Vegas because it eats the smallest amount of salary cap. Why would the Flames do it? Well, because you get a bigger return for making but, it a cheaper player, and the third party will get compensated as well. Uh, our pal Frank said, "I'll like, confirm this uh, in the last CBA update uh, in twenty twenty during the pandemic. Uh, uh, they changed the rule so you can't trade. You can't say we're go you know you trade me." Hannafin, I'll keep half his salary and then trade him. You need to trade me something for mm -hmm. 
Noah Han- or for Noah Hannafin, right. much like the Flames acquired Cole Brady from the <laughs> New Jersey Devils as part of the Chris Tanev trade, and then traded Cole Brady to Dallas to complete. These are the list rest of the players trade. that are never going to play. Is typically the type of player we're seeing here, correct? Just to make the deal yeah. legal. Yeah. So, so to, to, to make it work, you ha- you can't trade nothing for cap space. You have to trade an asset for cap space, even if it's an asset that's never going to play for you. So if you're, you know, whoever's being the third party here, you have to figure out what random dude from the Vegas system you want to take on. We, we saw Edmonton right. acquire, I think, Tyler Tucker or someone. Ty some, Tucker. Some, <laughs> Ty Tucker, a college goalie who's playing in U Sports right now, is technically still on the reserve list yeah. uh, of some team. He got moved to Edmonton. He will never play a game of pro hockey, most likely, outside of maybe the SPHL or the Coast or somewhere. But yeah. he needed to be included to make the trade legal. And so my guess is that kind of weird BS is one of the reasons that, I, that I, this is taking so long. The the more complexities there are, the more uh, folks at Central Registry have to confirm every little piece of this. And if there's a lot of little pieces and three to five trades to be made to make this thing legal, it'll take a while. It has taken a while for that reason. And that's what we're waiting on. Uh, that makes sense as per Francis there. Now, Pike, talk to me. Uh, do you have obligations with a hard out here? I've, I've seen some things about what programming is going on elsewhere. Or what, do you, what, what are your commitments here moving forward time-wise? I got to be out of here at 7.30. Okay, so we'll give you a little wiggle room there. 7.30. Let's see if we can't line up uh, someone else to jump in, Jack, uh, to take over for Pike. Let's aim for 7.25. We, Pike, we'll, we'll allow you to put some visine in before your 7.30. Oh, God. Well, the, nice, the, nice, the nice thing is it's radio, so I don't have – no one has to see my beautiful face. Hey, or, I would, I would or, say that's that's a that's a negative, not a positive. Or, or, or fun stuff in my background. Let's go to some questions and comments. If you are uh, watching live on Instagram, X, YouTube, or Facebook, uh, buzz your questions in. Jack will throw them up. We've got Ryan Pike for another 10 minutes where if you want to dive deep into the CBA or just ask us uh, what uh, our favorite flavors of ice cream are, we're here for you now. We're in this together. Now, Jack, are, are you in for a marathon here? Are we ready to do something stupid? If this takes hours, are we are we pot committed now? We're going all night. Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing like, it all night. After we're, dark, tinder, we're going after dark. straight into the, we're we're going straight into barn burden tomorrow. If it if that yeah, happens. I, it's, I a, will, it's a complicated uh, trade. You're going to be here all night. I'm going to need the DoorDash and flowers to my house, but I do have enough munitions for the evening. So we'll see how we do there. Let's see uh, what we've got for questions in the comments, Jack. Anything that you've got uh, loaded up? Fire away, and we'll uh, we'll dive into the uh the i guess what the encyclopedia of uh, ryan pike's brain here hey ryan's uh what would a disappointing return look like what would be underwhelming for you what's what's the cutoff for good to, to bad ryan here in terms of what the market is showing us with a, a hannafin type defender i think you want to have a first rounder involved uh i think you want a, a, a first i know you guys have been uh, pretty adamant on the show about getting a 2024 first I think if you're getting a 2024 first from Vegas, it's going to be a late one. So yep. I wouldn't hate uh, a 25 or 26 first, but I think you need a first. Uh, and I think you need uh, some kind of a prospect that the Scott Wheelers of the world get excited about. If it's just, hey, yeah. here's a guy, it's yeah, it's hard to really get revved up about that. Well, and, and to Grushnikov, we had a big debate about it on the show the other day. It's not a high ceiling, but it is a unique skill set. If you're a guy that deals with data or prospects, you love taking the cuts at the high ceilings because star players change rosters and the types of guys you see on waivers a couple times a year are third pair defenders. If Connie was going to take any heat over the Tanev deal, is it the ceiling of Grushnikov that maybe left people wanting more? Yeah, I mean, he's... I think the thing with Grushnikov is he felt he's an age group asset. By that, I mean, we saw Brad Tree Living trade a lot of draft picks in certain draft years. And yeah. age group assets are guys that basically fill in your age group so that you have like a 21 year old defenseman, you have a 23 year old defenseman, you have a 25 year old defenseman. Like you sort of have guys who can slot in who are in different parts of, of their entry level years so that you gain some flexibility that way. Uh, but with with Grushnikov, he's he's younger than Slavyov. He's younger than uh, Kuznetsov. He's okay. arguably a very similar player, but he sort of got some different nuances to to his game. So you know, if the idea is like, I'll say this: one of the reasons why the Flames drafted Jake Boltman when they did the year that they got uh, Jeremy Poirier, the year I think yeah. it was the, the Zari year, the year they drafted down twice, was they went hot damn. We don't have anyone who can be a shutdown physical guy. We need sort of a stay at home meat and potatoes guy. They yeah. like having different types of players. Boltman 
to be blunt, hasn't really panned out as they had hoped in, in the NCAA. Mm-hmm. And you bring in Grushnikov, and if he's just a Boltman that you know can play pro hockey, that fills a need for you that you d- perceive to have. So, but again, he's not going to be a guy that, you know, has, you know, showy offensive numbers in any level of hockey, but he's also the kind of guy that you look at him and you go, you could see the, the Wranglers going on a long playoff run or even the flames in the future and imagine a Grushnikov shaped player on that team playing important minutes because they had that kind of thing. We, we saw that case in point 2015, Derek England fought two guys during a playoff series. And without Derek England being Derek England, you can make an argument that the flames probably don't win that series. And Chris Tana being Chris Tana is one of the reasons why the flames had the success they did under him. So I think also, I think one of the reasons they struggled against Edmonton, Chris Tana was not Chris Tana because he was gimpy with one arm. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, it's you, you'd you like everybody to be TJ Brody in terms of offensive upside, but you kind of need some shutdown guys to kill penalties and sort of do the grunt work. Like, you know, the flames aren't the flames if you don't have a Michael Backlund eating the tough minutes so that mm. the Cadres and Lindholms and so on of the world get the, the high ground. And so they they see Grushnikov as a guy that can eat up the tough minutes to give yep. po- the guys like Poirier some high ground. Only a few minutes, so let's try to rip through a few more. Jack, uh, what have you got for us question-wise uh, with Ryan Pike before he heads to uh, other me- traditional media obligations, Ryan? Um, what is the deal that would make us – uh, the, what the flames trade marks for the devils before that. So what's the threshold to blow Connie's socks off? I think is kind of the terminology insiders are using. I think there's going to be a very robust market for Markstrom in the summer. It's a bad UFA crop. Goaltenders will break your hearts in the playoffs. And there's going to be more teams with more cap space and goalies that are expiring. What would the deal need to look like for you, Ryan, for, for to, to say, yeah, I think Craig Cronor, I'd pull the trigger on that. Ooh, that's a good one. I'd say guaranteed first, uh, a good 20 to 25 year old center and maybe a top prospect too. I think, you know, you, you, if you're the flames, you're only doing this if it meets a need, like, you know, worst case scenario. I mean, you don't want to hold anyone hostage and I don't think they would be uh, because Jacob Markstrom's a pro, but you know, in an ideal world for me, if you don't get the offers that you'd like, you have Jacob Markstrom play out his contract and be competing for starts with Dustin Wolf. So you can sort of battle test Wolf a bit and don't just give him the reins. And so what's going to make me deviate from that plan? Make, make me make me go, holy crap, you're offering me, you're offering mm-hmm. me Alexander, you know, Holtz, you're offering me Dawson Mercer, you're offering me your first round pick. And, you know, that's that's the kind of thing you, you need to to blow my hair back with an offer like that. And if I just go, eh, you know, if it's like, I'll give you two second rounders and a random guy. I mean, you know, I I'm, I'm a big fan of random players for systems because every, every system needs depth, but you want more than depth out of that kind of trade. You want a, a star or a potential star out of that trade. Um, you had noted earlier, uh, about pr- that, that you think there's some contracts in, in the, some drawers in the flames office at five, five, five saddle dome rise. Um, it's a busy time. Once the deadline's passed, Craig Conroy can work on some of the non-trade stuff, which uh, none of that's getting done right now. It's all trade all the time. Connie's probably not getting a lot of sleep. What is the situation regarding Hunter Brustevich who's not signed? What sort of deadlines are we looking at? And what are the time frames you, that you'd expect that to get done? That was a question that I uh, saw here that one's coming up from remote viewer 57. That's a great name. There's no hard deadlines. He's a, a pick last year and he's an older birthday. So they can, you know, they, as long as they give him a bona fide offer by June 1st, they keep his rights. But he's also a guy that if you think that maybe you can get him, you know, if Kitchener gets out early, you'd like to get him with the Wranglers. You'd like to sort of, you know, build some rapport in the system and start building him up in your system. And so I think there's definitely some incentives to get him in. Uh, in terms of hard deadlines, I'd say no. But I mean, if you know, it's it's like anything else. You know, if if you think this is a really important player in your system and you want to, you know, woo him for lack of a better point, you yeah. don't want to sort of dink around with it. You want to go, hey, you're our guy. You better sign right now so we can get you in here and start uh, getting you into our system. Uh, okay, we go to uh, one of our favorite guests in the history of the barn burner, Wacy Rabbit, assistant coach of the Saskatoon Blades. Uh, Wacy, love you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, what DVDs do you have behind you, Pike? Go Flames, go! Says uh, Wacy. Uh, this shelf got books, my, I know. Those are books. I have books, several books. No DVDs. Yeah. No DVDs. Hey, by the, the way, DVD, uh, DVDs over there. 
Yeah, they're off screen. Okay. Uh, tell us about the book that you're launching and the launch date. We're going to have you in studio later this month. I, I'm incredibly proud of you. I can't wait to sink my teeth into it. I'm almost I, offended. I don't have an early edition seeing that you have one in your hand. Tell us about the book hey, on the clock. I got these today. I did okay. media today and that was the first time I saw the book in person. So I got these today. Well, first uh, off, congrats. I thank you. I'll, uh, do you guys have copies? Do you want me to bring some over? I don't have any yet. I don't know if you have a, an address for me or not, but I will happily dive into one of those. I'll cuddle up in the corner of a coffee shop and destroy a couple hours on that thing as soon as I get it. Okay, I'll, I'll bring some over this week. When I, Tell when, us about before, the book. Uh, it is several hundred pages. It is the complete history of the Flames of the NHL draft uh, dating back to their days in Atlanta. Uh, I talked to... I think basically every GM except for Daryl. Uh, so from Cliff Fletcher all the way to, to, to wow. tree about basically every draft they've had, every notable drafts, uh, Broder over Trevor kid, Kachuk over, uh, Sergei Simsonov, uh, uh, how they, they drafted a bunch of guys who just seemingly had the worst luck possible in the eighties. Uh, hmm. you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of fun stories, a lot of weird stories. And, you know, you know me, I love weird history. And so it was really fun to dive in this, especially, you know, there's, to be blunt, there's not a lot of resources for good Atlanta Flames history. Uh, it's sort of uh, fallen by the wayside, unfortunately. And it was yeah. really fun to sort of just go through old newspapers and stuff and sort of, you know, dig up some of that stuff and, uh, you know, ask David Poyle really weird questions about how he drove from Vancouver to Atlanta <laughs> uh, in his little crappy car uh, after getting hired on the spot by Cliff Fletcher to open the Atlanta offices. And the Omni was not done at that point. So they had to basically open the open it. They, they ran their offices out of an ATCO trailer beside a construction yeah. site that was their arena because they they just had to they, they had to open at that point. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of weird history. So it's uh, it's in stores everywhere. March 19th, uh, available for pre-order online now. Uh, so I think uh, on launch day, I'm on with you boys, and we'll uh, we'll we'll talk until either my voice gives out or you run out of time or you know one or the other. It sounds like another marathon. Either way, I trust in your voice, and we never run out of time on the internet. Uh, and there's Mandeep as well, deeply offended. He doesn't have his copy. He wants it signed. Pike, are you signing books? Can we sign some for, GD for books? Mandeep? For Mandeep, I'll sign. <laughs> Mandeep takes Thank care. Thank you, of Ryan. Us. Appreciate you joining us here. Yeah, see you, boys. All right, we uh, we're we're still here live on Flames Nation slash Barnburner slash Afterburner slash Breaking Trade News. Uh, we are in the Martellip Studios, awaiting the word on a Noah Hannafin return. He has been sent to Vegas, is what's being reported. Uh, Daniil Miromanov is reported as to being one of the pieces coming back to Calgary, and it's also being reported that the holdup is over third party retention of salary, which is a very um, wordy way of saying. Other teams are going to take some money off of uh, Noah's salary and before it gets to Vegas, and that complicates matters with uh, the logistics of the deal. We'll keep some questions going if you want, Jack. I know we've got some other people that are going to be joining us as we continue this marathon as my wife continues to text me when I'll be returning home tonight. Not till this deal's done, honey. Not till this deal is done, Jack. We're in this. All right? Very good. Uh, d questions, comments, what do we got? And again, I'm excited about Pike's book. That's going to be a ton of fun. Cannot wait to, uh, he's incredibly thorough. And I know we recorded hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of interviews in the crafting of that novel, uh, that piece of history really. So I'm excited about it. Very excited. Uh, Pinder with all the trade talk, Connie's use of the waiver wire is almost overlooked. Your comments on that. Well, he's done very well on the waiver wire. AJ Greer at the beginning of the year, looked like about as good as a waiver wire guy that plays fourth line bangs and crash fought a little ran into guys played his ass off aj greer i i think is a guy we've stopped talking about because he's been hurt with a broken ankle he was a guy that could have been moved today for assets uh or had a friday and or a candidate for extension which he remains uh that that was a hell of a pickup i've really liked Braden pahal it makes sense that he would be a guy they targeted. He was a right shot. Austerly and Gilbert were left. They lost D Simone on waivers, who was a right shot. They needed some depth there. He was sort of a victim of a deep blue line in Vegas, as I believe Miramanov is probably as well. And then you look at it and we'll see what uh, Hanley looks like from Dallas. But I tweeted it out the moment he was on waivers. This is a guy that could fit what Craig Conroy is looking for. He's cheap, cheap, cheap. There's another year. Some of their depth D guys, their contracts are up, including Gilbert. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Osterley, he's also an upgrade on them and has played some pretty decent minutes, all things considered for Dallas this year. A journeyman player, I I think that's going to look savvy as well. That's three pretty nice uses of the waiver wire, which I thought was something that was a little underutilized uh, at times in this organization. And when you fill up your the bottom parts of your roster with veterans, there's not a lot of room to pull in some waiver claim guys. They didn't do that this year. They didn't have the Lewis and Lucic and Richie fourth line. They said, hey, we're going to try some kids. Some of them look great, Pospisil and Zeri. Some of them, eh, not quite ready yet. That's probably Adam Klapka. And then they also had some things happen that took players away. Rizicka claimed on waivers. Dubé's involvement in the 2018 World Junior Team incident in London, Ontario, he's immediately non-rostered. Greer gets hurt. They, they've just continued to go find good NHL players that, for whatever reasons, depth-wise, couldn't stay on certain organizations or were exposed to waivers. Done a great job on it. Really has. Uh, next, what do we got? Do you think the Flames will claim Ryan Johansson? I do not. Um, that said, Craig Conroy, if he knows he does not have a center coming in in the next little bit, maybe. If he knows he's working on a young center as part of the Steel of Vegas, that could change things. I could see it being a fit moving forward next year. But, I mean, Jared Govich has been good at center. And... I think what we're looking at here post deadline is less of a playoff push and more of a let's look at the kids and see how many assets we have heading into the summer in this draft. And then, okay, does a guy like Johansson check a box for the Calgary Flames next year if you don't acquire that young center that I'm sure is on their wish list? Uh, it just didn't really work that well in Colorado. And to be fair, it didn't at the end of his time in Nashville either. So all of a sudden, he's now exposed to waivers immediately and a big part of the reason that Philly ended up getting a first rounder from Colorado for Sean Walker. What is your guess on the return? I would say I'm guessing a first involved. We know Miramanov is involved. I'll guess there's also a, a young prospect, not this mid twenties, soon to be UFA toolsy player that I, I'm almost hesitant to call a prospect. Uh, and I'll say there's a conditional pick as well. So that would be four parts Heading Calgary's way, 75% retained Hannafin going Vegas's way. That's my guess. But again, um, that's not worth a lot. Nobody had guessed Dennis Skrushnikov in a second from Dallas, although we did sort of say it was going to be second. And a, a good prospect is sort of where it sounded like the offers were leading up to that deal closing. Time will tell. We shall see. Uh, okay. Okay. Other questions coming in on YouTube, Facebook, and uh, Instagram and Facebook uh, and Instagram and X as well. Do you think the Flames will flip one of these picks or prospects on Friday to add a roster player who can help this year? I've said the name Tyson Berry a lot. It's not because I think Tyson Berry is playing the best hockey of his career, nor that Tyson Berry is worth the salaries making right now, but it's the type of player that could come in and play some minutes that is a guy familiar with the NHL and has some tools that would fill some holes for the Calgary Flames who've, by the sounds of it, jettisoned their second pair in the last week, which would be Hanovan, Tanovan, uh, Tanovan, Hanovan. And if you only had to give up a seventh or you took a late pick from Nashville with Tyson Berry, it's that type of transaction that I could see them doing. As for flipping a pick, you'd want it to be something younger and with some term and team control. And again, are you trying to help this year or are you trying to add a piece to a young group that you're going to build with over the next few years? Those deals are going to be available right through the draft. You might be sitting with your third first rounder on your desk, ready to make a pick and someone calls you and says, we don't have a first. There's a guy we really like. Can we send you player X for this first rounder? Those types of deals can happen. And the more picks Connie has, absolutely the more comfortable he'd be turning them into players now rather than a prospect you'll be waiting two, three, four, five years on to see what they uh, develop into. Uh, hey, Pender, thoughts on a Chikorin trade? Uh, he's a good player. I, I think he's the type of player contender adds. He's got one year left. I mean, what would the comparable be? When, when Tyler Toffoli was sent to New Jersey this summer, what type of team did he go to? Did, did he go to a team that was retooling or did he go to a team that thought they were a contender in a piece of way? He, he went to a contender. That, that's the type of team that should be salivating at the thought of Jacob Chikrin. Uh, at this point, I don't know that the Flames are, should be outbidding a desperate playoff bound club for 
for a defenseman, but hey, he's a free agent a year. Crazier things have happened than, you know, he, he might be a perfect signing for the summer of 2025 uh, when he's free. I'm seeing some people. They're looking at their old friend it's retro. Not real, not real is clear, is it? How are you? I'm good. It's not very clear, my screen, is it? Yeah. Um, when you rub butter right on the camera lens, it's going to look like this. So, All right. What, was it that breakfast sandwich you had today? Thank you for that, by the way. It was delicious. That was a good breakfast sandwich. It was, uh, I have uh, some pizza sauce on there. So, <laughs> hang on. Uh, we're in for the long haul, Rhett. He's going to wipe down his camera and be back, I'm sure. Jack, what else do we have on, on the marathon schedule? Uh, who else is, is chiming in ready to do the marathon shift list? Oh, is it from his truck? Shades on at night. Corey Hart. Boom cat. How are you? Oh, he's muted. Well, I, that was me what? muting you. Sorry. There, there you are, buddy. Oh, there we are. Same parking lot as last week. Same Come day on. of the week. Another trade. Another defenseman trade. Except uh, when we went on last time, we, we knew what the trade was. Is yeah. it maybe Was this maybe a little premature to start doing the live stream? I, I would say no, because I don't know that I've ever seen numbers on the live stream like the numbers I'm seeing right now. now with, with Boom being back in the truck, are we expecting that light to go off every two minutes again, Jack? No, I'm, that... I'm letting it run. I'm letting it run this time. Damn okay. the environment. Damn the environment. Well, it's a big deal for the Flames. It doesn't happen. three. Don't do this 365 days a year, Dean, or even 366 this year, but it's a special occasion tonight. We're going to take some energy off the grid. I was going to say, am I, am I going to be on this show? I'm not. I'm just going to go elsewhere. How are we doing, everybody? Uh, What's happening? I keep um, waiting to find out what the deal is, and apparently it's very hard to figure out these things. People are being very quiet, which usually means things are close, Dean, if you have sources in certain places. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, uh, and we've been told, and I said it this morning, I wonder how many trades we're going to have with salary retention, conditional yep. picks that improve or disappear or whatever, and – Jacko, I put a uh, I put a Frank tweet in the drive. Kelly McCrimmon's a sharp dude, and it's more than just McCrimmon. Yeah, but I just I watched him operate for the better part of eight years in the Western League, and he was cutthroat when it came to getting trades done. And even okay. there, you think uh, you think in in uh, Vegas, what was it two years ago when they had the Dadnov trade with Ottawa? It's like, hey, we, he wasn't on the no trade or whatever that was. They don't care. Push it through. Whatever. He gets deals done. And yep. you'll you'll see in the Frank tweet why probably salary retention is a big deal. Uh, so flames are going to eat some, obviously. You get another party involved so they can eat some. Right. So that you end up being on the hook for a, a small, small percentage. And I'll let, I'll let you, uh, Pinder, sure. if you want to read. This was from Frank maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. Yeah, and this is regarding Jake Gensel, the pending UFA sniper from the Penguins. Not definitive, but it sounds like teams in the mix are Carolina, Florida, the Rangers, the Canucks, and Vegas. There you go, Dean. Right. Unless something changes, the belief is Florida and Vancouver have made a strong push but don't have the goods to pull it off. Of note, Vegas could potentially create more cap room if Alec Martinez ends up on LTIR, LTIR would be an injury significant enough that he can't return in the regular season. And that would allow you to exceed the salary cap or whatever your upper limit is by the amount of Martinez salary. So if he's done for the regular season, that's even more cap space. And they, they're already weaponizing Mark Stone's cap space with this Hannafin deal. Dean. So if, and you can understand why they're going to need the Vegas golden Knights. They're going all in. They always do. Uh, they're going to need somebody to eat the other half of the half of yep. Hannafin's contract because you you know they'll be in on on Gensel as well. And if if they can't Jeez. find someone to do this deal, uh, does does the whole deal again? There's been no trade call. We they have agreed in principle to a deal from what we're led to believe, but this salary stuff potentially complicates it. I I wonder if there's still a chance here that this thing could be torpedoed if McCrimmon says, well no, I can't I can't take the other half of this salary because we're going yeah. Gensel hunting tomorrow or Friday. 
Yeah, or it's, hey, I'm Team X, I'm San Jose, for example. I, I'm willing to eat money, but I need a fourth. Well, no, a fifth is reasonable. Everyone's taking a fifth. Well, I want a fourth. Sorry. It's like, so here we are. I mean, it's something like that that could be holding up this process, I, I think we're both kind of saying, right? And what a fit Noah would be for Vegas, right? You've with Petrangelo and Theodore, and then he slides in. <laughs> they, they know what they're doing there, man. And, and is it crazy to think that you could put Martinez on LTIR? Could you live without him maybe for a month and a half and then bring him Regular back to season, the playoffs? Yeah. Right? So um, do we have a problem with that? Because, of course, Twitter now, being around the deadline, eating salary or putting long-term uh, IR. Are it is okay funny what – what people have problems with Dino. So here's the thing. If you're a fan of a team that is competing against Vegas, you have a huge problem with it. But like for Oilers fans, for example, they didn't seem to have any problem with Mike Smith being on LTIR with the last year of his deal, even though he played the last game of the year the season before. So I feel like it's more uh, rivalry than actual anger at the rules. Yeah, I think if you're using it to your benefit, you're okay with it. But when some team that you don't like is using it, uh, I mean, it does, it, it, you wonder the spirit of the rule I guess mm. is what, if you get injuries in the playoffs, then you don't need to worry about the salary cap affecting your roster. Is that essentially what the thought process is? Because it does seem weird that you would have, you'd be a slave to the cap for mm. 82 games. And then as soon as the games that matter start, ah, to hell with it, the cap don't matter. Yeah. And that, that's kind of, you know, the, the lightning were what 18 million over the cap famously when Kucherov yeah. came back and set the playoffs on fire on route to a, a yeah. cup. My opinion would be I don't like it, but I don't know how you're going to change any of it. Yeah, and I guess maybe the way to change it, Red, is that we have a very stringent set of check-ins from league doctors rather than team officials because right. I, I don't know that the, the cap thing is easily tightened up so much as, well, we'll send our doctors because we can't take your doctor's words for it. The problem with the doctors, and it's, this is getting very legal, is that a doctor's not going to tell you you're not hurt. Right. Yeah. Ever. If you say you're hurt, the doctor is very much, he's going to put a lot of risk on himself. And if he's working sure. for the league, then the league and just say, well, you're not hurt. And you get out there and you get worse hurt. Ooh, that's, it's not going to be good. Yeah. Is that was the Mike Smith an eye thing, on right? things just in case the details come down. Where we have a producer. Knocking? He's always like, on top of stuff. That's watching things. No, it is good. very serious right now. Retro, what'd you have for dinner, bud? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> More steak? No. I had a uh, a mixed meat shawarma or doner <laughs> and a pizza. We're learning a lot about his eating habits when he's not near uh, the shoveler. And this, a pizza. This, this multiple doner stops. And and a pizza. And a pizza. Not and a and a coke. I had a shawarma, a mixed meat shawarma, and a pizza. That's not really the, is does, is that the side that traditionally goes with the shawarma? I'm not really familiar. I went for the for the the mixed meat, and as I'm purchasing it, I'm like, pizza would be good too. <laughs> and so then I ordered the pizza, but that app down it tracks where you are. Right. Yeah, so the pizza yeah. got delivered. <laughs> I'd no, drive it back didn't. to get Come it. Come on. <laughs> I got the update. It says Jeez. your pizza has been delivered. And I'm like, it's not uh, here. Oh, wow. What? How can that be? Is that not like going grocery shopping when you're starving? Isn't that just like bad practice, Rhett? It like is. Before you've eaten, eaten the first thing, you've ordered a second thing. Oh. <laughs> and I feel shame right now. I can really. It's. Yeah. You hate yourself, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to battle through. Up. I'm going to get through it somehow yeah, or other. Yeah, yeah. A uh, big win for the Renegades tonight, guys, over at uh, the rink here. Really? Big, yeah, big win for the Renegades, yeah. yeah. And this is the tune-up for Provincials, or where are we at? I don't know. I don't think so. I think this is Cities. I okay. think it's something different, but a uh, big win. Yeah, Just keep yeah winning. everybody's very excited. So Just keep we winning. Don't lose. Hmm? Yeah, no, we, it's all right. We're... Now, here's something that that broke uh, within us starting this broadcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, team Hart and uh, most integral player to the Calgary Flames, not named Jacob Markstrom. Marty Pospisil suspended three games for his hit from behind on Vinny Dunn, fellas. Seems right. We, you know, two, one, two, three, somewhere in there. Um, 
It was a bad hit. It was a bad hit. And if you go on – now, again, I saw, of course, it, all the Leaf uh, fans. Like, so that, that was the look at the Morgan Riley hit compared to that hit. This gets three, that gets five, I, whatever. But I would think for Marty Pospisil, that's three games. Uh, you're trying to send a message. We know what's been going on. We can't say it so much, but we're, we've seen what you've been up to, mister. And uh, yep. here's three games. And next time it'll be probably five minimum would be my guess. He had the high stick on Marchand first game out of the all-star break against Boston. I believe that was early Feb. And then in the preseason, I don't know if we remembered it, but it was a televised game. It was Cole Perfetti he clipped. He got a shoulder right to the head from the blind side that that I feel like George Perro said a, a, a real tete-a-tete with Marty and said, look, the way you're playing has to change or we're going to be talking a lot more. Oh, I, I do too. Yeah. it's And, and truthfully, the, Marty probably has to learn that there's, there is a line you have to ride and he's been over it a little bit. I, I am kind of surprised. This is the first one that did get him. It's a big one. But there are yeah. a lot of those hits that feel like, you know, do you want to try and come around and hit more in the front or you're just happy kind of going, you're keeping that angle. You're coming in at that angle and you're not stopping. That number's showing or not. So, uh, but you love the way he plays. And this is, it. it's kind of like, I think for a lot of these guys, when they come in, this is the, this is what you pay to, to party. This is the paid to get into the party. You got to have a little bit of this. So it comes with the territory. Other things we've learned today, Pike, the uh, the master interpreter of this, the collective bargaining agreement, noted that uh, this does not have to be a signing trade at all. In fact, uh, if the rights for Noah Hannafin end up in Vegas's hands before the 1 p.m. deadline on Friday, as we expect they will, he's eligible for an extension next week if they want to. Uh, and that's what happened with Hampus Lindholm, who moved at the deadline to Boston from Anaheim a couple of years ago. They extended him within days of the deal, uh, which has proven to be a pretty prudent move from the Bruins. Uh, so I, I don't, if anyone's thinking it's like the, the, the contracts holding it up now, nah, once they get his rights, they can talk contracting whenever they want this spring. Yeah, I guess I hadn't really thought about that part, right? Cause they're, they're not getting him in the off season. The season isn't over. He becomes their property and that shifts, yeah. right? The as long as you hold his trade. rights on the date of the deadline, you're the team eligible for that extension. And the reason it was yeah. different with Kachuk is because it was an off season deal. So yeah. Florida didn't have his rights at the deadline. It had to be Calgary signing him and then trading him for eight years. I'm going to start driving because we're done here. So I can stay on and talk with y'all or I can, or I can leave. What do you, but I'm going to have to take my, you. I'm going to have to take my sunglasses. No, I'm going to hang around. I'm just, what? You can't drive these sunglasses on. No, I'm going to take my glasses off. I'm going to start driving. It's just, there's not going to be much to look at here. I got to turn off my things there. Get my, yeah. all right. That's just a dark room. I mean, at this point, why don't you just call us when you're I there? I think you just tell Jack to do the right thing. No, nah, come on. Retro, what uh, kind of pizza? It was a uh, kind of an all meat and loaded, oh, yeah. very loaded. Well, there's a lot of meats, eh? The mixed meat it's, shawarma and then the all meat pizza. It was thick, but it was delicious. Oh, my kid's turned off. Hello, her, kiddo. She's turned What's on her on? cell phone. Uh, hey, how was you, tell him about how, you, how your game was. Yeah. How was the goalie today? How was the goalie today? The goalie was good. 3 2. Had to be good. Woo. Some young, of, young Mika numbers getting posted here, Dino. Yeah. Not a lot, of, not always a lot of uh, run support for the goalie. So three was it. So you don't, don't let any more than two in. So, but, uh, so meat pizza, eh? You like the donair meat on a pizza? How do you feel about donair meat? I've never done that before. That uh, I've never tried that. I'm not against it. I'm sure it would be delicious. Yeah, it's good in a wrap. So mixed meat. What kind? What do you got in that shawarma? Well, I got the chicken shawarma and the uh, the the beef kebab. Yeah, maybe even a little yeah. lamb if you're lucky. You could find that someplace no, it wasn't too. No, lamb. No. Okay. Are you putting a bunch of sauce on that thing? Is it like I, a... yeah, the lady actually looked at me and was like, all the sauces? <laughs> all the sauces. It's like the pocket dog. Yeah, yeah. just drag She's it like, through. She's like, it's going to be too much. And I'm like, no, just get it on there. Let's go. Yeah, lady, bang a gong, get it on. Let's go. 
Lots of uh, a lot of trades today, guys. Hey, there's gonna be a ton. We're, Can I? We're ask, not gonna please. need to. We don't need to go late Friday for sure. I know. Oh, yeah, I may as well take Friday off. Just everyone oh, watch Frank on Friday. So Can you do that great. for us? Can we see a simulcast Friday. on YouTube? I don't even know how that works. I hope something comes in soon because my battery's gonna die. Yeah, if you want a quick recap, Dean, I got a bunch of the deals today right in front Hit me. of us. Uh, While well, we we saw. Was it yesterday? Vladimir Tarasenko went to Ottawa to Florida. Yes. John Walker, the pending UFA defenseman, oh, went from Philadelphia this this, today to Colorado. Yeah. Colorado sent a first back, which was wow. And then we realized it was also uh, Ryan Johansson going back with said first. Uh, Philadelphia immediately put, Lee, immediately put Johansson on waivers. So taking that salary back, Actually, Colorado accrues more space in the swap. They've added cap space and have opened their window to add more players. Thus, the first round are going to Philly because that's certainly a, them doing a favor for Colorado. With Johansson gone, we wondered about uh, the center ice position for the Avs. And sure enough, they went and filled it a moment later as Bowen Byram went from the Avs to the Sabres. Casey Middlestad, the highly touted first rounder who's finally blossomed right he's going to colorado to play behind nathan mckinnon what it's a been spot. a nice year for middlestad <laughs> what what a spot to go end up to play, yes right? like, hmm, okay from not a chance at the playoffs to stanley cup i don't mind it. so did you tell kevin adams that bowen byron was going to be all right go ahead do the deal well if you would like to go back to what i said last summer and how it would have helped everyone if the Sabres had went and got Hannafin and a goaltender. Although that Uka Pekka Lukanen is they really like dynamite yeah. right now. Well done, yeah. Rhett. Jesus. Yeah. Hurt yourself. <laughs> Flames should have uh, got that bow and fire. People wondering about the status of your leather jacket. Last afterburner on Monday after the Seattle game, you noted to Cammy that you'd lost or misplaced it. Uh, please tell me there's a happy ending. It's a very, uh, very nice uh, leather jacket, even uh, though uh, Cammy called it discount Indiana Jones. Yeah, she doesn't want she, she She's ever seen fashion, so crest. Did you lose that jacket? I, I thought I had, but I actually treated it with respect and hung it up, and that's why I couldn't find it. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. It'd be the last place you'd look for it. I on know. a hanger in the closet. There's with no respect. way there's, there's no way I caught home at two thirty in the morning on Saturday night and hung up a jacket. Like that's I was funny. like, it's minus twenty. How do you lose your jacket? You're not going anywhere at two in the morning at minus twenty without your jacket. Like only Rhett could pull that off, but sure enough you didn't. So congrats on that. No, it's a nice jacket. Cammy, you know, she should take that back. It's she a should. very nice jacket. Very nice jacket. She's got a lot of growing up to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's so wearing her leather jacket just to rub the salt in. It was beautiful. So who's who's left to be traded at this Hannafin thing? Well, there's that's another deal. Done. We don't want to talk about him too much, but uh, the Edmonton Oilers finally right. pushed that first rounder into the uh, chip, chips pushed in. What did they get back? Well, they get a right shot centerman, Adam Henrique, who maybe they could put on the wing and Sam Carrick, a lot of salary retention there. The Oilers still have a bit of room to make another move if they did want to add a defenseman, but their first is now gone. And that was their most valuable trade ship uh, that we thought they'd have in play. And then the other big deal was Alex Wenberg, who we saw scratch for trade related reasons Monday with Seattle. He's off to New York to play third line center. Uh, Philip Heedle got hurt, came back, Got hurt again. They needed a third line center with his absence, and uh, Wenberg's going to step in. Great passer. We'll see who he looks uh, for the Ranger. Are you getting sick, Pinder? I know you got a sick. No, kid. I'm just drinking beer, and I could use a water. So I'm, if you guys talk, I'll go get a water. Okay. Well, no, you, you're the host. You can't leave. How's, yes. how's the roads you out there, leave. Dean? Slippery? What's going you know, on? You're pretty good. We're uh, it's getting chilly again, though. Minus 13. Uh, care and caution here on uh, on Crow Child here in mm. the uh, barn burner chopper with some chopper AccuWeather. Uh, now the Oiler fans, my, my, my buddy Snoop back in Robin, he's texting me. He's like, so what's the deal with Conroy? Is it just out, out to screw the Oilers? You ship two guys to Vancouver, one guy mm -hmm. to Dallas, and now one guy to Vegas. Like, what's uh Hey, if that's, if that's an added bonus, I'm okay with it. You say it works for me. He it's is, fun. He's shrewd that way, Conroy. He's yeah, shrewd. Right. Hates the Oilers. Yeah, hates the Oilers. Well, and to be fair, it, it it's felt like for a while we would have Vegas Edmonton as a first round matchup in the two three. You now Vancouver stumbled a bit, so has Vegas. LA's gotten better, but 
how much better have the Vegas Golden Knights gotten the last 48 hours? Hannafin steps in on the back end. They also added Anthony Mantha, who can shoot it a ton. I think that Mantha ad is going to be sneaky good. For I them. agree. Like, yeah, we, I think that's a pretty. I think that's a pretty sneaky ad. You forget all about him, yeah. but he's big. Like he's big, but doesn't play big. But guy can skate, big body, and can shoot it. He's he's a, he's exactly what a Golden Knight would be. Right? <laughs> He'll be perfect there. Yeah, and they don't have to ask him to come in and, well, you got to play a 200-foot game. Like, no, like, put him on a line where he can just go rip the puck. you got a lot of great checkers on that team. He doesn't have to be on one of those lines. Come in, yeah. fill the net. Like, Barbashev fit so well last year, and McCrimmon just has a great feel for what types of players can move in and, and sort of that ruthless, yeah, we'll, we'll put a guy in LTR if we have to. Like, How are whatever they taste on- been done, flags fly forever. How are they in on every trade? Every every name that you hear, all oh, Vegas Golden Knights, they've got their first this year, first next year, first the year after. They got all these players. They get all these yeah. guys. How are they doing this? Well, remember, they didn't really give up that much when they, uh, I guess it would have been Stone. Like, Branstrom was the big piece. That's, what, four years ago? Like, what the hell's Eric Branstrom? Like yeah, a 6'7 for round, Ottawa? Like, yikes. At, at the time, he was a first-round pick uh, defenseman. Suzuki goes to Montreal Pacioretty. in the Pacioretty deal. They do the, what was it, Peyton Krebs and Tuck in the Eichel deal. That's but been yeah, unbelievable. Eichel's been But awesome. they hung a banner, right? So, yeah, it, yeah. All, it all seems to fit. But I, I was kind of surprised because I went to see what the Vegas was when the word broke that Hannafin was going to be going there. And I was surprised that you thought they'd be depleted from picks. They went for it last year. No, they no. Got, they're missing a couple this year. They got all the next year, I think. They're, they're only they're first. Still got, but... a, still got a bunch of prospects. Looks like the the Silver Knights and Henderson, good as any team in the in the AHL. They, they yeah. give them credit. They're doing well. They're doing a hell of a job down there. Shit. Yeah, and it's it's easy to come in and say, "Hey, I'm an owner. I've had billions of dollars. I've been very successful. Watch me win here." That, that's what all the owners kind of think, but. To see Bill Foley actually do it, like he said, I want to win a cup in six years, and they literally won the cup their sixth year in the league. It's incredible. Yeah. So if this gets done, your buddy Conroy got her all finished up retro. Well, he might still have more stuff to do. No? Can't he trade other guys? If you yeah, can get I, this I, done, now you can start hanging around on the – you want a winger? We got a winger. We got lots of wingers. What do you like in a winger? Tall, short, speedy, slow, score, passer. What do you want? Wingers are us. I mean, as long as this hand of a thing doesn't drag to one, I, I think we could see more. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I was just thinking when you looked at the order of business, everybody kind of felt for Conroy, new GM, all of these impending UFAs, these contracts that were signed by Treliving. It was like Treliving kind of left the office on fire and took off. He got them all done, and time will tell, I guess, what the return is. Obviously, this will be. We don't know what the return is on this. He, he seems to like a uh, Russian defenseman. Yeah. There's a lot of that all of a sudden. It seems there? like there's some of that going on. Or yeah. or forwards. There were no Russians allowed. Now it's nothing but it's raw, raw Rasputin in the locker room now for the Flames. But he's he's going to get this deal done. And if he gets something else done. You know, I, again, you talk about people on Twitter. It was when after the Tanev deal gets done, obviously, what, a week later, they pick up Joel Hanley on waivers. So yep. if you throw that into the return, so it was, you know, Grush, Grushnikov or whatever, and yep. the pick, and Joel Hanley, well, you could put uh, Pahal into this deal too because they picked him up off of waivers. If you if you want to make yourself feel better about what kind of return they're getting. But he's he's had a lot of work to do. I don't remember the Flames doing this much yeah. waiver wire shopping and trading and – they signed back when they're obviously going to try and get uh, get Shillington done. This has been a big year of work for any GM, let alone a guy in his first year. It's a ton. And to be fair, like he's looking at more of this next year is <laughs> you've got other U- UFAs coming. Like, boy, you, you're Sharon Govich looks like a great find. Do you extend him this summer? Do you say, geez, we got so many wingers. Maybe I could sell high here. Do you try to convert him to a center? Do you re-up them? Do you take them to the deadline? And you got the same questions about Kuzmenko as well. Like, there's all of a sudden, like, still next year could be a very busy deadline. Who knows? Feels like the Sharon Govich ones, you just have more body work to look at. 
if, if this is a guy who recognizes I'm in a good spot, things are good. My career blossomed here. You know, I'm not hometown discount or whatever, but I wonder what a extension for him would look like. Cause I'd be, I, I would be sitting down and talking extension with him. Certainly more than Kuzmenko. I think. I'd agree with that. I think he's also shown some versatility at center. I, he's succeeded at playing the position more than I thought he would. And I know the points and shots have dropped off pretty dramatically since moving from the wing, but he has been a responsible center and that's why uh, I, you're okay with it. And, you know, maybe you can't go find that under 25 year old center that Connie talked about when we had him on at the all-star break and you have to make chicken salad out of chicken bleep. Uh, Jaron Govich has been fine. Like mm-hmm. I think for what I expected when it's like, Hey, you played wing most of your career. Uh, go play the middle. It's been good. Does it seem unlikely that there's going to be a center? Cause the Vegas golden Knights do have some centermen in their system. Some of their top prospects are centers yep. with, with this defenseman. And I, I guess it depends what the pick is. If it isn't a first then maybe it is a player. I just wonder. It might be you both. Gotta, you, it's been a lot of D coming in and could a, could a centerman be part of this deal? I'm, I'm David Edstrom, Edstrom is their top uh, prospect in the organization by many people's rankings. He's 18 years old. He's playing with Frölunda in Sweden. He's a center. And it was his draft year last year. Could you pry him away? What's his ceiling? Some people have said it might be sort of a middle six or bottom six center. Does, does that change how you feel about it? Um I don't know that Miramanov is a, a prospect so much as a, a toolsy project here, Dean. He will be a UFA this summer by not reaching 80 games played in the league in three professional seasons. So you're not going to have a lot of time to look at him, but he's a converted forward. He's had lots of injury issues. He's got a bomb from the point. He can run a power play. Like he also isn't not a prospect in a weird way too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Well, and it's weird that he played, I, I believe in junior, he was playing as a forward. Yeah, And somewhere along the line, obviously we'll find out if this trade goes through, we'll do more homework, but along the way pivots to a, def- to, a to a defenseman, we'll f- figure out why that is. Um, and then misses COVID hits and everybody's life gets turned upside down. Here's a Russian kid. You're playing overseas. You're playing here and then has a, a major injury that he's had to come back, come back from like 26. Is that uh, how old he is? I think something. Yeah. Like that. He'll turn 27 in July and he'll, you know, you, you probably have to make your mind up pretty quick on him because he's a free agent and yeah. there's tools. There's I, I was texting one scout. There, there's a lot of people like tools and those tools are, are still there. Can someone turn him into something that can play in the top six? And then the other thing I always wonder about a guy with his passport is, how much more money would a KHL team offer him than, than you might be able to, if you think yeah, he's maybe. just a stick seven, who knows? But he's, I mean, he's a kid that's, he was playing junior in the Quebec league. He's been, he's been in Canada. He's been in North America for, for a while. I don't know. Yeah, and I'm not saying he doesn't want to be here. I'm just um, wondering if, if you're offered 2 million there and you can make one here, maybe it's just business. It's interesting because him, the uh, Grushnikov a week ago, Brostevich, a lot hearing a lot of the same stuff, aren't we? From people when you talk to them, they're intriguing. Yeah, they're, tools. They're, they weren't they weren't the top prospects of their respective teams, but for whatever there's reason to think that there could be more. That there was something that maybe with uh, Brostevich, he missed uh, at least part of a season, if not all of a season. Yep, this sure guy, sure. this guy missed uh, missed some time, and and there's a lot of there's a lot of the similar things which you hope. Some of it comes to fruition, but it also maybe lends a little bit of uh, credence to Conroy and his team that they're they're doing the right things. That they're maybe you're not going to be able to get the top prospects, but then find the guys who who can maybe develop, who have a little bit more there. Maybe they're the fifth best prospect, but mm-hmm. when the when it comes out in the wash, maybe they're not the fifth. Kind of like a Sharon Govich thing, right? That, yep. He, yep. he had fallen down their depth chart. You look, he was a fifth round pick. We talked about it the other day. You redo that draft. He's one of the top five scorers in that draft. Finding Crazy. that type of value and then hoping that it, uh, that it comes through. The, like when, when Connie was hired, we understood that he knew the organization well and he was groomed for this job. I would, based on what he did for the Flames, 
he has to hang his hat on talent evaluation at this point. He's not a cap guru. He's not a data guru. It doesn't mean he doesn't know those things, but it's not where his bread's been buttered. He was the guy that was always at tournaments, watching best on best, traveling around to see kids. This is a, when you look at all these deals, he's putting his stamp on this team based on a lot of the viewings he's had. And that's a very, very different uh, year than the one that Brad Treliving would have had with this group, where it would be a lot mm -hmm. of reports he's reading. And if Connie's going to be a great GM in this league, I really believe it is going to be based off that talent evaluator sort of stamp. The other thing that's also interesting that we haven't, obviously Kuzmenko is a forward, but we're talking about centerman Conroy, a centerman. He would, you feel like he would be well equipped to know what to look for the finer things, the details that he would recognize that maybe other scouts wouldn't, or at least what he feels is yeah. value in a centerman where maybe in the, maybe it would have been somebody different in the, one of those Vancouver deals or in the Dallas deal, or maybe in mm -hmm. this deal. Um, it's, uh, he saw, he, saw something in Sharon Govich that felt like he was the guy that moved to the middle and yep. the guys responded. I don't know that he's going to be a center full time next year or moving forward, but he was the guy at the right time to move to the middle of that line. And now the points are starting to come back, even though they went away for a little while. It, it does give you, if you're, I feel like if you're a flames fan, this it's not real fun watching some of your players, your favorite players leave guys. Yeah. You've got their jerseys, that sort of thing. And then they're leaving town. But I feel like in the past, and this is not a shot to anybody, but it, I'll just say this. It sucks when your team is in a big sell mode and you don't trust the guy doing the, doing the work. Yeah. When you don't trust the guys in the office making, calling the shots and getting things done. And only time will tell. But to this point, I, I feel like Conroy's got a good handle on things. And you, you wonder, is this – little two, three month stretch with Lindholm, Zadorov, all of these guys going, not only did they not re-sign them, and like we talked on the other show this morning about the money that they potentially saved, not signing Elias Lindholm or no not kidding. signing so right? Like just absolutely saving themselves from a catastrophe. What if this is a three or four month stretch that does end up setting up this team for the next 10 years? It's what you dream on. Yeah. But... Well, if you factor in the draft into that, the, the months that we're talking about, absolutely. Like he's got yeah. a lot of picks all of a sudden. A first, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth that they didn't have uh, before they traded Zadorov, like in the fall. Like that's all been added, plus two more conditional picks. Could be another third, another fourth. I mean, it ain't nothing. Now, look, no, it ain't, th those, it ain't those nothing. picks going to a podium doesn't guarantee you shit, but the more times you get up there, the more chances you have to connect on one, right? I was reading today, I think it was Jim Matheson on Twitter who was talking about or on X, talking about the Dallas Stars. And in that, in either back to back yeah. drafts or two out of three, where they took Stankoven and they got Wyatt Johnston, Johnston and they took Jason Robertson, like they, they got four what looked to be cornerstone pieces, some of them early, but in the second round. What, there again, you've got a lot of picks this year. If you can hit on a couple of them, and if a few of the guys you've already got in the cupboard can can play, and then you've got extra picks for next year, there is reason to think this thing can turn around quickly. But you do you, you need some of these guys to pan out. If yep. Rostevich says I'm not coming to Calgary, and then this, that's not going to happen. They, they, if this yeah. other guy's oh, I'm a UFA this summer, I'm out. They don't get the third round pick in the uh, in the Dallas deal. I, it or can the go Vancouver. sideways, no. but yeah, it can go sideways. But you hope that they find their way through with at least something because it, I said it, it's PTSD from that at a Ginla and, and Bo Meester stuff. You thought you, you did as well as you could. You got players and firsts and you had three first round picks and here we go reset. And it was not. No, it sure wasn't. And uh, I, I don't want to sound like the broken record, but I, I will pick this management team over that one any day of the week. That old GM hasn't worked since, and that doesn't mean to be a shot, but uh, I trust this group and what we've seen them do in the draft the last decade uh, more, a lot more than the one that uh, that had those extra picks back in 2013. And you know what? Maybe they were great picks, and it was just a coincidence of, of bad mm -hmm. breaks or bad luck. 
Uh, I mean, Emil Poirier looked like a legit bleeping prospect for a while. And next thing you know, he was in something along the lines of a player assistance program. And he was never the same when he came back. I, you know, that maybe in a different universe, Emil Poirier has been a great NHLer. Who knows? And uh, it comes down to the draft and you hit and you miss. And Poirier looked like he looked like a dog on a bone. He looked like he really the exact did. kind of player that you wanted. He and looked I like a Marty Pospisil. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, he looked like a, a Marchand, a Pos- somebody who yeah. I don't know offensively what kind of numbers he would have put up, but it just it never came through. And I always forget the American goalie who won the World Junior Gold. Yeah, they with- drafted him in the second round, and it you felt like here's a guy he's got balls as big as the room. He wins yeah. big games, and then he too he was he had to step away from the team. And Mental health stuff too in there. Yeah. Never and ha- did never and will never play. So, yeah, has done is done playing hockey and, yeah. and like weirdly showed up and watched the Flames play in Detroit one time. It was a very odd situation. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to find the goalies. And Tyler Parsons, that's who it was. That's right. A 17 year goalie that won a Memorial Cup. That's pretty rare stuff. He was great. That's right. He was on the Kachuk team in London yeah. and in on Red the Deer. American team. Yeah. It my goodness. It was. It looked like you had. You had a real stud. Didn't play a game for the NHL team, so uh, it's kind of like we were we were going back and forth. It's it's impossible to talk about in in definitives. Well, they've they've done well because they got this. We won't know. You can't. There's know no. There's nothing them. sure they've gotten. They, right? There's no yeah. asset that is. We know exactly what this in is, and the ones you're most comfy with, even if we include like Sharon Govich and Kuzmenko, one year left. Like really. And- you like a lot of the work that's been done and they've collected a lot of lottery tickets, but you know, you got to go scratch these things and find some winners in there now. And I like their chances of finding a few winners in here, but there's absolutely no guarantee yet. Right. And if Hannafin is, if this deal goes through Conroy did what he said he was going to do, which was we're not losing anyone for nothing. It happened with Johnny. It, it cannot happen again. And true to his word, he's, he's gone out and done the business. It took a little time. So Foley was the first. You signed yep. Backlund and kept him, and Zorro, everybody else went home. Like they're Tanov. getting a new address. Yeah, and the Shillington one we talked at great length with Ryan Pike about earlier. That yeah, it just doesn't feel like it's a you that's going to walk because of how unique the circumstances are, and all the dialogue we've heard from the player and the team is these two are very thankful for each other. This is a partnership that's not ending anytime soon. What a next deal looks like is an interesting conversation, but. It's going to be the Flames and Oliver Shillington on the next deal. And in addition to that, it's not like he's looking at a, at a defense right now where he's going to be pay, playing five minutes a night. No. This is a, this is a team. This is a relationship. You have been with the coach for, what, nine years, I think we talked about. Yeah, back you're, to the HL for sure. You're comfortable with the coach. The team has done the right thing. You're feeling good. You look like your game's back on track. And – this team is just about starved for guys that can play. So how would you like to play 20 a night for the next five years? How's that sound? So it's a great spot for him to, uh, to resign and a great spot for the flames to be able to resign him at a contract. They probably feel good about. Yeah. And, and I think uh, we talked about it, like a one year deal, essentially one year they paid him for. He, he wasn't there cause he was dealing with off ice personal issues. It wouldn't surprise me at all. If a one year deal at that number was back in there, Pike had floated this. And I think it's a great concept because it's like, Hey, we knew what you were with Chris Tanev. You look like a nice top four guy. We've seen what you have been with Braden Pahal on a third pair, but what does Oliver Shillington look like on a second pair without Chris Tanev is the question that no one has the answer to because we've never seen it. I mean, we've seen, what, two games of it? That's how long Tano's been gone? I mean, yeah. it really is. And then that's with Hannafin there. Now he's gone. I mean, it's going to be a lesser player that's on that second pair. I, there's a lot of learning to do here on the Flames on, on what exactly he is in this. The minutes are going to be way up. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a different-looking team tomorrow against Tampa. You've got no possible. Suddenly he's got a three-game holiday on the East Coast. He's He's hanging out. Yep. Sunning himself in uh, in sunny FLA and uh, and Hannafin's not going to be around so I don't know the Wranglers are at home, right? They're playing tonight, I believe. So I'll check in on that. Have yeah. you got enough bodies are you bringing guys in? It's not Well, they got Pelchi and Coronado that I think you'll see prominent minutes for 
Yeah. Uh, remember, Coronado got called up a didn't play on Monday. I think that right. changes, obviously. And, um, yeah. and they'll have an extra body on the back end as well. Yeah, yeah and again, for the, the forgotten part of it is, while I think fans are all focused, what's the pick? What's the player? What's it going to look like? Yeah. Is and Rhett's brought it up a bunch of times the work that's been done by Ryan Huska and those that coaching staff they've done a hell of a job. Yeah. There's been rumors swirling and guys leaving and guys don't want to be here and moping around, pouting all of that. They've played pretty well. Now they're going to miss great. playoffs from the looks that of things, considered. but I, I don't know. This has been a far more consistent and engaged hockey team than we watched a year ago. I think. Not even close. Like yeah, kind of easy the, to say. The right? level is is significantly higher, and I think as Rhett's noted with the coaching staff, and I've said with the leadership group, tip your cap. Nazem yeah. Kadri, Blake Coleman, Michael Backlund, uh, John Degueux, they didn't have to work through this. They could have just thrown their hands and said, "Well, this year's going to suck." We're bleeped. They didn't give them credit. Yeah. Uh, one one so, Wranglers and Tucson. That game's on the road. That's down in Arizona. If, if that's the state Tucson's in, I would. Yeah. Think. I believe it is, yeah. Yeah, unless that's moved. Have they moved it? Is the Coyotes well, I think still there. Tucson, yeah. I don't know. yeah, no, I think Tucson is still there. Yeah, okay. it's still there. So, yeah, the guys in the room will probably be a little bummed. I think Noah was a well-liked guy. Yeah. Well, and Tanev especially, right? There's your quiet leader yeah. that sets the tone for the group. Yeah, that would be – the room would feel a whole lot different for sure. With, with those two guys gone. And we, we talked about it when Lindholm left. It was maybe a little bit of look behind the curtain when Coleman talked about guys that didn't want to be here were gone and were kind of better off for it. Uh, don't think they're better off for it here. Those guys were those guys were good, play, especially Hannafin. You know, what a year he had. Put, him, put yep. the Flames in a great spot to be able to trade him and him to get a contract if he gets it now or later. And Tanev's Tanev. Everybody loved that guy. So this it will be... It sucks. I, I, just a comparable. I remember I was working at a, I was working at a TV station one time, and we were doing the late night. It was the, we do the late night cast, and yep. the news guy left, and the weather guy left, and we had a blast every night. And then it was just, well, this is the fun. I, I'm mm-hmm. the last guy here. This stinks, and and it was hard. To, it was hard to shake. You had to it's about being a pro, and you got to dig in and and do the job. I was not as well compensated as say Mackenzie Weger was. Or is uh, when I was doing that. That was in Red Gear, by the way. Um, okay. So uh, I probably should have been paid Uyghur like money. Now that I think about it, uh, pre or post, like Florida Uyghur or Calgary Uyghur? No, the Cal- I get the extension. Yeah, the Calgary. <laughs> wow, great work, Dean. Uh, we yeah. do have some more intel from uh, Elliot Friedman. Let's go to that oh, now. The Hannafin return is not finalized. His third party wow. involvement is still being finalized, but it includes defenseman Daniil Miramanov. And a first round pick. Uh, Elliot's not reporting the whole deal, but those he is saying yes, Miramanov's in it, as we heard from Dreger earlier. And he is the first to officially put it out there. There's a first round pick coming back to Calgary. Uh, Dean, I don't know if there's a huge gasp or uh, I guess uh, exhale of relief, but it felt to me like the first was going to happen. It, it has. Is there more to this? Is it just this? We don't know, but. Nice to see it official from a guy like Elliot. There is indeed a first rounder, whether it's this year's or next year's, we don't know. But a first was an important ingredient in this deal. They've got it. It was, but we were also talking, you know, first player cross, but you know, that sort of thing. Still could um, be, right? Th- yeah. I mean, this defenseman, like you say, is he a project? Is he a prospect? I don't know what he is. So you got the first round pick, which felt like it had to be the bare minimum. Yeah. Um, I, I think you still, I think everybody would still hope that there is more. Um, yep. you saw what the Oilers paid. You've seen what, what teams have paid their, their first round picks for. Um, but yeah, I, Hey, if they get, if they get the first rounder, that's, that's the bare minimum and they get the first rounder. Cause if it's a, if it was a second, no, uh, yeah. you'd have a real hard time. You're not spinning or selling that to anybody. You needed it to be a first and if that's accurate, then they got it, and we'll see what else there is. I think you still hope that there's maybe a little bit more, but yeah, I agree. I think there's going to be a prospect in there. The 26 year old that can walk in a few months doesn't feel like that has huge value. He, he may have been a guy that got sent to the A or put on waivers or something like that. I don't know if he's waiver eligible, but like yeah. he would be ninth on their depth chart after Hannafin arrives, right? Like, let's not overstate what he is. 
and we can assume that there's that the flames are eating some salary. So yes, if you're eating, we know that they're retaining, and there's a third party involved. So I yeah. would expect it's seventy five percent retained on Hannafin by the time he arrives in Vegas. They only have to pay him a quarter. So if if Calgary's eating a half, and and sending Hannafin, I, I it, it has to be more than a first and and this player. I would I would I would certainly hope anyway. With what we've been told with the price, which is why I guess it's taking so long, but with the price that you have to pay for teams to to eat salary, yep. there's gonna have you 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 want you're gonna want more out of this uh, out of this package than just the two assets. Agreed. Yeah, you'd want a young one and you'd want uh, you know, maybe even a, a second conditional pick, which would make sense because We've seen it attached in all their other deals. If Dallas gets to the final, it's a third. If Vancouver gets to the conference final, the fourth becomes a third. Why not throw one of those in? That that yeah. could be a piece as well, right? So we'll wait and see. The Crimin's yeah, a hell of a GM. He'll grind it, and especially because it's not we're not an hour away from the deadline. He's going to keep some of his powder dry for tomorrow and Friday, whatever that is. If it's picks, an extra prospect, a body, if it's – He's going to have to, he'll leave some door open that if at the 11th hour he can get a deal done, he's going to be able to do it. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, one for you, big picture. How are you going to remember Noah Hannafin's five years in Calgary? I think it's five. It was a six year deal they signed or five. He yeah. and Lindholm arriving in that blockbuster deal that you're living pulled off. What's your legacy for Hannafin as a flying? It's a good question. Oh, it? It, yeah, it is. Um, it's probably going to be one that you won't be able to put a finger on until he's gone. It was kind of when you see what players did, it was when Bo Meester left, it's like, man, he did skate a lot. He put in a lot of minutes. And I think for Noah, he didn't, you were, were you ever really upset with his play, maybe frustrated for periods of time, but he was just, he was real steady. He was a hell of a skater. Um, but it's a it's a good question. I don't I don't really know what my answer would be there. The minutes and the durability are the hallmarks for me. Yeah, because he was never a special offensive player, nor you know this Derek England imposing figure or Robin Regeer. But God, he was available all the time, almost never hurt, and you could just put him out for twenty five minutes every night. And like, no, he's not a power play guy, and no, he's not a number one. But, God, for 25 minutes, you just knew you had a, a real good pro out there that could play against the other team's best players all night. Never well, he got was a tired. Guy that had, he played so many games at such a young age. And yeah. it was, well, he's already 20, you know, he's 25, he's 26, he's 24. How much better? What if he had this season? If this season was, you know, if that's your, that's the benchmark for him. If he's put, having this kind of year every year, yeah, it's the tale's probably a little bit different. For, for Noah Hannafin, but um, he did have that one, I what, had nearly 48 points or 50 points the one year. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of TJ Brody in a weird way. Like the, the, the feet of the elite tool, and on years when the team was very high scoring, they got more points because they not were as just brain more on, crampy. They're on the ice half the time. Right? Like not as brain crampy, glaring nope. mistakes in your own end. He nope. was. It was better defensively. Yeah, I just sort of meant like those offensive years where they could jump up around 50. It, it was, oh, the yeah. year you finished first in the West. Oh, the year you had 340 goal guys. Oh, the like when the team's clicking offensively, those guys play enough. They just get more helpers. I don't know that they were better. It's just the team scored more that year. Yeah. They're out there half the bloody game. Anyway. So has your wife been text? She's upset, right? You're yeah, she wanted to go watch some tennis. Uh, no. Oh, no. With you, but, or uh, she needed you to watch? No, definitely not with me. I was going to be at home watching the oh, children. So I so she could. had to change her plans because a third yeah. team needs to figure out salary retention. Is that going to yeah. fly when you – well, babe, here's the thing. The third well, team – we... the salary retention, babe, it's a big thing. What we needed was a third party to retain our children uh, tonight, and th finding that partner was right. the compensation for said partner. Very difficult thing yeah, to do, yeah, apparently. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you were going to go into the studio, bang yeah, a just, quick 30, 35 minutes? Yeah, and we're be done with it. It's only an hour and 44 minutes we've done. I mean, it's, it's yeah. probably a non-cur record for a non-show. Yeah. 
I mean, I drove home. I'm in my driveway now. I, <laughs> yeah, I could go in. Yeah, made it all the way. Pike all left way. to do a radio obligation, has finished that interview, and is now back in the comments. If he wants to yeah. jump back in, Pike, get your ass back in here. <laughs> Um, so then can I go? Cause I, I'm, we can go on some shifts here. I'd like you to get to your studio. I, I, Jack yeah, and I are committed. We're, we're, we, we're going to see this through. If, if this has to go viral and you watch me sleep in this chair till 7am, I'm doing it. I okay, put my I'm foot gonna, down. I haven't had any dinner, so I might see if there's some, I mean, who am I kidding? There's no food. I'll yeah, go in and food. see if what's in the fridge and I'll hobble up to the uh, studio. I, I do wonder if we're going to get anything tonight though. That's my only concern if this could be a oh they're uh they're tapping out for it today but they'll get back at it in the morning Any chance are we gonna have to tell some miami stories to kill the time until 2 a.m i'm in oh boy is pike ready to go <clears throat> pike get it get your ass in here jackson pike in in. uh right. we made the call for some questions and comments earlier if you got something you're curious about fire it in there jack will throw it in jack have you got any left from earlier let her rip, bud. He was also floating the idea of fans coming on. I'm not really. The thing about a comment or a question is the bad ones never see the day. Phones. You just pick the good ones when it's a comment. If someone gets on, you just, that's no. Is Jack going to take me off of the feet here? Is Jack alive? Jack going to be eating dinner. Jack, you eating dinner? What the hell's going on here? Hello? Sorry. Yeah, I was, I was eating dinner. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, buddy. What uh what do you want to do here? I don't know. Want to come back on? I, I don't know. Um Mike. This is some high-end podcasting. Dudes eating pizza, phones dying, <laughs> others driving in his Uber, the others pounding beers. Welcome to Barn Burner. This is your first time? Come on in. <laughs> that is what we're doing. It's the bleeping oh. internet. And it's funny, the, the worst this gets and the jankier and less we have to talk about the more viewers are watching we're we're set to eclipse eleven thousand here that's quite something there he is oh the pike bomb god bless you <laughs> how you guys doing so uh <laughs> a lot's changed pike we know there's a first now <laughs> here's here's what i've i've been led to believe a bunch of conditional picks really As in i yeah i've been led to believe plural conditional i don't have any more information than that but uh and three, it's a three-team trade, and there's there's stuff to to juggle. Through, okay. So, what is the rule on a conditional pick for a player resigning? Is that They're, allowed? You're not allowed. You, not you allowed. can't do that. That used to be a thing. That used to be a thing, but they took it out. They uh, the two. Ch I think the changes they made in the last CBA were you can't. Uh, there's no more uh, conditional picks contingent on a player resigning somewhere. And uh, you can't trade something for nothing anymore. Like if you're, if yeah, there's which money is why changing those hands, players. Yeah. yeah. So those are the two things. So uh, yeah, it could be, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to venture a guess how long this is going to take. It could be hours, but it's already been, I don't know. I don't Drums. even know if they're on the trade call yet. Would the call itself take a long time or does it depend yes. how, how murky it is and how much, like the more conditions, the, the longer that call is taking is probably a fair assumption. Yeah, they essentially they have to hash out and everyone has to agree on the language on the trade call. So uh like say here here's a, like say Noah Hannifin, for example, has an eighteen no trade. So they have to basically confirm, okay, we're sure that that, that Vegas isn't on your no trade list. Okay, good. Next, you know, Miromanov, does he have a contract? Yes. Does he have uh, a, a, any tra no trade protection? Let's check. No, okay, we're good. So they it's basically that level of minutia where they have to go through, uh, especially for conditional picks, especially when there's like contingent stuff, you have yep. to go through and basically say, okay, Vegas, do you have this pick? Yes. Okay, if A happens, do you have the mm -hmm. pick for scenario B and so on and so forth? So it's, uh, my guess is it gets done tonight because they've already stayed up this damn late and the poor people, my guess is the poor people at the central registry are still there, but. I don't know. I mean, remember, remember the, the remember the uh, the Kachuk trade that was during the summer. I believe yep. the, the the trade call was finished at like ten o'clock Eastern on a freaking Friday night. So it was a Friday. I was at a rodeo in Invermere, British Columbia, and it was like holy bleep! And it was the same day. I think the Blue Jays put up like a twenty-five spot against the, the Red Sox. It was like, what yeah. is going on? This is supposed to be a chill Friday. I'm gonna go watch some dudes play. I, I was uh, at a barbecue, poker, and a bull ring. No, it, it blew up. 
I was at a barbecue. My phone dinged. And I went, ah, oh, crap. I think I have to go. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's exactly is... how it would have gone. Ah, yeah. oh, crap. You look at it, you're like, hmm, that's interesting. I think I had to go. In my defense, uh, at a at a charity event, Eric Francis was hosting. I uh, my 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 now wife met uh, Brad for living, and he apologized for the the weird hours that we we had mm. to we had to keep at this profession Time. sometimes. Yeah. And she offhandedly mentioned the 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 Kachuk trade, and he started profusely apologizing for how late that went. So uh, I assume we will be getting a version of that from his successor at some point. Uh, yeah. And they I don't need to apologize. This is the good stuff. I mean, aside from my wife, everyone loves this. We're at over 11,000 people watching live right now, Pike. People want to know what the return is. Um, let's talk about some of these conditional things. So the Vegas Golden Knights, interestingly, don't have any picks with conditions in the <laughs> system. Like, they will. They will after this deal. But if they have what made the, 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 the Monaghan deal so complex is that Florida – had a first rounder that, oh yeah, like we'll give this to you in the deal with Kachuk with and and they had the the one from the Claude Giroux trade too. So the Florida's 2014 pick is tied up in the Giroux trade. Their 2024. Yeah. Yeah, 2024 or 2025 is tied up in in the Kachuk trade. They can't use their 2026 for anything until they know they won't need it for the 2025. And the so 2025 like, one is top 10 protected. So until yeah. Florida doesn't finish in the bottom 10, then that pick will officially yeah. be the one that they send to Calgary. And if Florida had finished in the bottom 10, well, shit, now we got to go to yeah, 2026. You, so, and then Montreal has picked between 2026 and the Calgary. So you're, and like, you're, like, oh my God. You're, you're able. So if for Florida, I think it'd be allowed. You can negate your own condition. Like say, if you're Florida and you're like, we want to move our, our 2026 pick, you can negate your own condition and say, you know what? We're just going to undo our own protection on this pick. You can't right. do that for someone for something that's happened with someone else. So I actually, someone in my mentions today asked me and I don't have an answer. So uh, the Elias, the, 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 the fourth rounder that might turn into a third rounder in the Elias yep. Lindholm trade. Yep. What happens if Elias Lindholm gets traded to Boston? What happens to that? Condition? I, I think that that conditions based on team results has nothing to do with Elias Lindholm's but there's production. A, as far as I know, there's a games play requirement for it. Ooh, is it half the games in the playoff run? That's often this, the type of stipulation is, is, we see. That's what yeah. Craig told me in an interview. So I might have to harass him on Friday to ask him. What <laughs> but I mean, this maybe maybe there's Mike. maybe there's no trade involving Lindholm leaving Vancouver, and this is completely meaningless Moot. anyway. But yeah, but. But, but yeah, that's that's a wrinkle we hadn't thought of. And then what would happen? Let's say if he plays half the games for Boston, and they get to the final. Well, no, you're probably not getting that big. But he uh, plays half the games for Boston, and then Vancouver makes the final. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. the rooting interests are for Flames fans for a Dallas Vancouver conference final with Dallas going to the final. And now you got Vegas with some conditional picks. You've got some horses here. If, if as long as you maybe you can find something to send to Colorado as well, and you what, can really yeah, what, key what in happens, on all these non Edmonton teams making runs here. On a certain level, that be wouldn't that be like the most Craig Conroy thing ever? With like I the nicest it. man in the world, just sets up like sixteen thousand conditional picks to cover every single base he could. Non Edmonton teams, yeah, that would be beautiful. Like him, was it Sam Gagne he fought? I'm trying to remember who he fought. He, he only fought a few guys. No, but the Edmonton, the Battle of Alberta yeah. fight, both the goalie fight and the Monaghan Nugent Hopkins fight, that both of a, which yeah. I went, what the hell? Yeah, the, the what the hell we had this year was the Blake Coleman. And uh, the third line center, Matthias Janmark. Scrap. Yes, that, after, that was the, after what the after hell? Coleman launched New, or, uh, McDavid into the air with like that was I, I for the press box I went and he got pretty high. Yeah, <laughs> some some good vertical in that. I mean, yeah, if, if that that's how you do it, I guess that's how they teach you how to throw hip checks in Texas. What sort of conditions are you expecting here? Like, I would think the ones we did, we've seen with Tanev and Lindholm would probably be good parameters or things to work off of because, well, they're the types of conditions that Craig Conroy's put in deals. And this is Craig Conroy doing another deal. And if we're going to revisit those, it's if Dallas gets to the Stanley Cup final, a third rounder that's not in the deal gets added and given to the Flames. Differently, yeah. the Vancouver one is if they can get to the conference final, so win the Pacific, essentially, as long as they're a one, two, or a three seed, uh, then a fourth, which is going to Calgary, will be upgraded 
to a third. So different conditions in the sense that one pick can be upgraded. The other pick doesn't exist uh, in Dallas unless they travel to the finals. Yeah, I I, I suspect something like that. I just I just quickly skimmed cap friendly. Uh, the 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 Flames have conditional picks uh, coming to them in I believe both of their Vancouver trades, both the the Zadorov trade and. <laughs> The Lindo one has two conditions on it. The fourth is one of two fourth rounders that Vancouver has, the and then if it and then if it it converts to a third, but only if nine things happen with all the the playoff stuff and the games played stuff. The other one for uh, and then they have I think the highest Chicago third? pick. Yeah, the Chicago the fifth, the highest fifth pass. So fifth this rounder. year they get a, the the, the Zadorov deal. They got a third in twenty twenty six and a fifth this summer twenty twenty four. One of the, the two fifth is, either, is the yeah. highest pick that Chicago holds because Chicago yes. owes a fifth to Vancouver for what I believe was the Bavillier swap. Yeah. yeah, that is the one. Ooh. And the other pick that Chicago has is Calgary's. From the right? uh, Ryan Carpenter trade, oh so my the God, Flames could no. get Chicago's pick or their own pick back, uh, which would be it's the, the second the time. It'd, It'll be, it'd be, be the Chicago. second time that, that Craig Conroy reacquires the trade that his predecessor traded away. So that Jersey, would be very right? funny. Yeah, your third rounder last summer was their own, correct? Yes, that was the uh, the Adar Suniev uh, draft pick. It all comes back to Adar Suniev somehow. Uh, this coming in from Hunter. It looks like a goaltender. I don't know. Uh, does Pike prefer picks over prospects in the night system? I guess that's probably a question on, um, you know, how do you view the prospects in the night systems? Because you, you, generally speaking, you could say, well, we want a second or, oh, I like this kid who was a second round or whatever it is. I like their centers. I mean, they, they have just looking at their reserve list. I mean, Edstrom, there's something there. He's quite Sweet. good. Uh, you know, Sapovalov, who's in junior right now, he's 20, he's a center, he's very good. Uh, you know, those two guys may, uh, if you want a Swede, you know, Jordan Gustafson's pretty decent. Uh, the I think the big challenge is they have a lot of guys who are playing in Europe right now, or guys yeah. who are playing in major junior. So, the guy like right now, the Henderson Silver Knights, who I, I double checked, no one interesting is missing from their lineup tonight. It's the same basic okay. lineup they had the last couple games, but they they have. You know, it's a workman like AHL team. They're sort of on the outside looking in on the playoff picture. They're arguably a less deep AHL team this year than the Wranglers are. So you're not really going to be going in there trying to raid them. But, you know, the beyond their AHL system, they have a lot of guys who are sort of entering their entry level years. Uh, I think uh, Sapovalov and uh, Gustafsson are playing in junior. And I believe uh, the other gentleman, Edstrom, is playing in Sweden right now. Yeah, he's with Fraluda, uh, I believe. Matthew Cataford's another name. He's a forward yeah. that's played all three positions. He's with Halifax and is one of the top players in the queue. He could be on the uh, World Junior team for Ottawa next year. Um, so sounds like that's an elite skill set. Whether he finishes as a center would be something uh, of note because he's listed as a right winger, left winger, and center. So versatile, but... Flames sure have a lot of wingers, Pike. They need to start drilling down on young centermen because Kadri's absolutely a center. He's 33. Backlund's absolutely a center. I believe he's 35. No one else is absolutely a center. So maybe Kevin Rooney, but I think his deal's up at the end of this year. Yeah, and, you know, they have, you know, I think Connor Zary could do it. He could, he's, you know, I, I never like saying someone, oh, they're too small to do something because that's I think that's a kind of a shitty way to discount people. And I think if we've looked at, the goalie, the flames and the AHL, he's basically thumbing his nose at anyone ever said, Oh, you're too small to do right. whatever. Yeah. But historically, you know, Pelche played a little bit of center growing up. He's not really a center. He hasn't played that. center since, since early, early, early a major junior. He's, he's a interesting. Winger. Hansik could do it, but he hasn't played center in North America. He's he's a winger who takes faceoffs. He's not a center. He has played zero center this year. They talked about converting him, and then yep. he had that uh, the abdominal injury in uh, in Edmonton in preseason so that sort of set him back and you know he's to be blunt he's not setting the world on fire this year in no. uh, in Vancouver he's solid he's had good games but you know the real story down there is sort of how well Jaden Lipinski's playing uh, yeah. Hansik has been fine but you know I think 
you know, he hasn't really progressed defensively this year the way that people hope, nor has he really played much, if any, center. Um, and, you know, Coronado played a bit of center in college, but basically just did it because they ran out of bodies and they needed someone. And Coronado is the type of kid that if the coach is like, you know, it's sort of like how uh, Randy Sportak from uh, Hockey News always brings this up. When Sam Bennett was in junior, he, you know, he grew up and he was playing on the wing of McDavid. And he was asked when he mm. went to major junior, hey, can you play center? He goes, I'll try. And Sam Bennett was a, a guy who played a lot of wing who could play center, who tried really hard, wasn't really great at it, but he was a guy that could do it. He just didn't necessarily excel at it. And I would say, you know, Bennett or uh, <laughs> Coronado is sort of the, a Sam Bennett college center in that they needed somebody to do it. And they said, can you? And he said, I'll try. And he was decent at it. But, you know, you're basically overseeing with uh, Sharon Govich, where Sharon Govich just doesn't generate as much offensively when he's up yeah. the middle as he does on the wing. Clear. And yeah. much like how Sharon Govich is more valuable, I think, to the Flames long term on the wing. You can make the same case for for Coronado. Coronado is just so much better on the wing than he is at center. We, you know, so he can do it. He, you know, he's been killing penalties in the AHL. He's, you know, they're part, figuring out that part of his game. But I don't think center is in his future. And so, if you look at pretty much the entire Flames cupboard, who's the guys that project as centers? Jaden Lipinski and Jaden Lipinski could end up being a fourth line center. I don't know if he's going to end up much higher the rotation than that. And he's also played zero pro games. And so you, you need different options. And if I'm the flames, both in this year's draft and in every transaction I make, if someone's who can play centers becomes available waivers, whatever, I give a long thought to maybe I should claim them because you know, they, they need options. They've got, a lot of depth on, on the blue line, a lot of different types of people and players and styles uh, on the blue line who can play either side, but they need, they need more centers. They're set for wings though. We've got the deal. Uh, let's bring in Boomer. If we got him as well, stay with us, Pike. Uh, the return for Noah Hannafin is Miramanov, who we knew uh, the first round pick that we've had confirmed earlier and a third rounder that will become a second rounder. Should Vegas get beyond round one, i.e. win one round, get to round two, uh, that per Elliott Friedman. We also have other insiders essentially saying the same thing. Darren Dreger saying call is underway. Vegas acquires Hannafin oh, from Calgary God. for a first rounder, Miramanov, and a conditional third, which upgrades to a second if the Knights win a playoff round. Double salary retention here in Philadelphia is the third party that uh, is eating the half of the remaining half that uh, was left after Calgary retained. That is your deal. So are you ready? You need the... Uh... There it is. Yeah, there it we is. stayed live. It took two hours, but we got it. So you wonder, was it negotiating with Philadelphia to be the broker or was it hunting for a third team to be a broker? That's, I guess that's the, the other thing. We'll have to find out what Vegas is paying philadelphia for the uh the salary retention. yeah it sounds like sort of the fourth or fifth round has been the going rate for this type of money that wouldn't yeah, surprise me at all had if it just a, a shade under five takes it to two and a half to five hats one point hey five. so it's not exactly what uh, you'd hope. You'd hope there's one more prospect in there, Dean, because a 26-year-old who's set to hit the free agent market this summer, I, I just hesitate to call a prospect. It doesn't mean he can't be a great player, but whew, this is uh, he could also be gone in two months. He might only have 20, you know, tw 12 to 20 games in the organization. That period stop. It could be, but it, like I was saying before uh, when I was still uh, driving, hmm. you could... You could make a case for this guy if and I'm guessing this is another guy that probably Conroy and his guys kind of sniffed out throughout the uh, throughout the Vegas system. Yeah, there's jobs to be had here in the NHL. We know what you can do in the American Hockey League. You look at his American League numbers. They're actually quite I mean, they're strong AHL numbers. He looks yep. like, is he a tweener. Is he a, is he more than that? Like we said, is he coming back from injury? Does he need more time to play? Is he going to develop and blossom Yeah. Good a chance as any to make a Calgary blue line. I'm not sure what the other teams in the NHL are doing, but it would look like there's some jobs that would be up for grabs in a training camp here next year. So, and um, the, now the question when you look is 
where like who Vegas plays in round one is all of a sudden pretty important. Like can Edmonton reel in Vancouver? If, that gap's if, not as big as it used better, to be. I as love long as it's Vegas not Vancouver, I think Vancouver. the Flames are happy with it. If it's not Vancouver, yeah. I think the Flames are happy. But if it, if there's a Vancouver Vegas series, who who do they start cheering for? Well, well the higher picks too, then what do you Vegas? That's, even so in that's this trade, it's simple. Even if in this trade, if they lose in round one, it's a higher first round pick. But you call, you want them to get to round two, so you get the second rounder instead of the third. So then, but, but then the first just to clarify that, it's the last four teams that the picks move in round one, and that's it, Pike. Right when we're talking about round one reseeding those picks. Yeah, the uh, it is uh, thirty one. Let's see, going backwards, thirty two is the is the cup winner. Thirty one is the cup finalist. Uh, 30 and 29 are the conference finalist losers. And then they seed it in reverse order by first division winners by points by uh, total points. And then everyone who didn't win the division. So, right. So it doesn't have anything with first or second. I'm off on that. It's it's only the final four. Um, But either way, I hear what you're saying, Dito. Like it is interesting. They now have conditional picks for Dallas, Vegas, and Vancouver. (laughs) There's a lot of horses that you can, you can root for here. They could actually I, hit all uh, three conditions, by the way, just to, to give you the weird trivia. Vancouver could get to the conference final. Dallas could get to the Stanley Cup final. And Vegas could win around without seeing Vancouver. They could have all three conditional picks. See, my, my my theory is that Conroy just wants to have, have a watch party at the Dome in the offices uh, during the playoffs. He wants a, a rooting interest for the team in every single right. series and every single round. So now they sort of have a nesting doll of conditions that they basically – have a reason to watch every single game now. So I'll I'll ask you, Pike. Um, now that if if this is in fact the uh, the deal, it's a first, a conditional third that could be a second, and Daniel Miramanov, who we all <laughs> had to Google to find out yep. who the hell that guy was. Uh, what I because I, I'm just looking at the chat and this uh, I'm whelmed. I'm underwhelmed. What's What's your, your, is this what you had in mind as a return on Hannafin? I mean, I think the, the hope was first prospect roster player. Yeah. Uh, Miramanov, he's a tweener. He's, there's something there, but you don't quite know what it is. And then instead of a prospect, you get a third that turns into a second. So, that's it is terrible. Funny. I don't know if you said roster player and prospect. I don't know which one Miramanov is at this point. He might be both in a weird way, right? Like he might be better today than Osterley and Gilbert. Uh, he also might not and be gone. I, I, I don't know. That can't he be might the, be both. That can't be the measuring stick, though. We're talking about in as far as value coming in a trade. It's not about what you have. No, I right just mean he's a roster player. Like he 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 might slide into their top four. Or but he it's might a, you'd be talking be about a roster player from the other team uh, yeah. not, of, not about your roster it'd be a um he's on their nhl roster but yeah i hear what you're saying you, you want to know what i'm it. saying yeah. it's this is not you know this is not peyton krebs coming with alex tuck and a right. pick you can make an thing. argument this isn't even Braden bahal coming back it's a guy that's much less of a known commodity which i think that that makes it really i think challenging to, to answer your question dean just the yeah, idea yeah. of you know like 29 games played in the nhl so what the hell is he I don't, I don't know. know. And, and I think that's forward and has had bad injury luck. Like that's funny. More yeah, I mean, layers Pahal, to not knowing. Yeah. Pahal, <laughs> you got Pahal off the waiver wire uh, to be determined. Uh, so if it's a first and a second best case, if, if they can win around. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, you started to look at the, as soon as you knew it was Vegas. Okay. So what's it going to be? And I guess we did the same thing with Dallas. Yeah. You knew it wasn't going to be Stanko and you knew it. Oh, well, maybe it, it could Bork. be. Could it be Bork? Could it be something? No, no, no. And then you keep going down. And then this one, you had to kind of really keep going down to find uh, to find Miramanov on this one. But uh, I guess what it is, there's also the salary retention. Even just straight up, if there was no salary retention, be like, okay, you got your first and a, okay, second's good. And then the prospect's not really a prospect, but you didn't have to eat them. They're eating half the dough, which seems to be, a, you get, you can get, a commodity you can get a haul for for two and a half million and granted it's an expiring contract but still i um i'm a little underwhelmed we were kind of warned about it but uh little if it's a first to second and this kid turns out to be a player 
but that's the great unknown. And it's the same thing with the Russian they got in Dallas. Like they love the character. That's great. But what, how does he impact the NHL roster? And to be yeah. fair, it was the exact same thing with Sharon Govich. You're like, okay, well, how do you feel about this guy? I don't know. How am I supposed to tell you how I feel about the Toffoli deal when I don't know what Sharon Govich is? He had 24 goals one year and 12 the next and was healthy scratch. I don't know. Or, or if you want, you can put Pahal in this deal. You can't, but sure. Well, well like with the Dallas one, you get well, Joel well, Hanley. The deal was made first and that forced Hanley on the waiver. Whatever that, uh, yeah. whatever makes you feel better. Yeah. It's... What are the other deals that were done today? We saw Edmonton give up a first for Carrick and Henrique, a first yeah. plus. Yep. Um, Colorado gave up their first, right? In that, uh, yeah, because they had to take Johansson's money with Sean yeah, Walker. Yeah, yeah. And they immediately wave him. Colorado gained cap space in that deal significantly. I guess the other part of it is, and it's there's no way of knowing. It's Wednesday, right? You know, deadline's Friday. Is this a deal that would have been there on Friday? Don't play him tomorrow against Tampa if you don't want to. If that's part of the uh, the thought process on it. Um, is this the only team that was offering a first round pick is the third potentially second. Is that the, the best sweetener on top of a first that you could get? The other thing with this first and second is if they don't get to the final four, these are not 28, 29, 30, like 27 picks. Like they're, they're in a wild card today. This could be a pick in the teens potentially. I don't know that I'd bet it's there, but it's a better first than the one they're getting from Vancouver unless Vegas goes to the final four. Safe to say. Mm -hmm. um, and look, a second's valuable. You can turn a second into, as we're seeing in the trade market, oh, sure. a pretty yeah. decent player. So they all of a sudden have three first rounders and three second rounders. We don't know if these are 2024 picks. I haven't seen that confirmed anywhere, but if these are both 2024s, the conditional and the first, they will have six picks in the first two rounds this year. That's an incredible war chest to do work with. It doesn't mean you go to the podium six times necessarily. Does Vegas have their second this year? If it does move to a second, I don't think they do, do they? I know they were missing one somewhere, but I don't know if it was this year. Yeah, so probably if it goes, they have their third, not their second. They don't have it, their second this year. If it moves to a second, it'd be 2025 best case. <clears> or maybe it's just a 2025 third that moves up. Who knows? We'll yeah, see. you could be right. Could be a 2025 and, and, first. And, and Who knows? Connie might say, look, I love the 2025 draft. I want your first there. I, I don't know. We'll see. So there it is. Maybe you should have oh. uh, let your wife go to tennis or whatever it was she wanted to go to. Are you kidding me? We've got 12,000 people hanging, Dean, and I got to drink a beer. <laughs> Uh, you, you now you just, I, I don't know. Do you, what, what's the, what are, what are you now hoping for? Is it, are you pinning your hopes to, I'm watching to Manov? Is it the, the first oh, rounder? Sorry. Is it the third going to a second? The first is the most valuable asset here without question. Yeah. Like, and again, this is not a normal player that they've got here. You don't find toolsy 26 year olds that have only played 29 games in the NHL, but are on an thing... NHL roster. Like, this is a really, really unique, toolsy player. Used to be a forward. Shoots at a ton. Great on the power play. Not much for defending. Like, this is an intriguing player, and he may be nothing at the NHL level, and it, it might be one of those, like, holy shit, someone finally put it all together for this kid. It's an expiring contract. Right. Noah Hannafin had, what, how many games we got left? 20, 18, 22. He had that many left as a Calgary Flame not going to make the playoffs, and it was pretty clear he was not coming back. You got a first and a potentially second, whatever you want to call the prospect. The prospect, I think, is the part. It would have been – that's a guy that – he was in the – he was a first-round pick two years ago. That sort of thing, right? You felt really good. But, again, probably we're out to lunch. We thought that – we wanted a first and for Toffoli, and it wasn't a first and. It was a third and. And it turned no, out, it turned okay. out to be sure Sharon Govich, yeah, to be fair. It turned but, out yeah. to be, yeah, to be all and right. you, you said, it, Dean. I mean, Frank warned us for lack of a better term. Frank sort of primed the pump with, well, you know, between the all the discussions of places that he wanted to go and play, he don't really want to go someplace that he had a chance to extend. And if you're if you're Vegas, are you giving up your first round pick for a guy you don't think you have a chance to extend? You probably aren't. And so, you know, we, we saw this 
you know, granted, it's a bad bad comparison because Jerome Aginla, even at 30, whatever years of age, he got moved, but still Jerome friggin' Aginla, uh, a, 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 a just, just shy of elite player at that point. But you're moving Noah Hannafin, who is a really good second pair guy, but can't run a power play. He plays on the power play, but he's one of two defensemen on the 29th best power play in the NHL in the second unit. So that's not his bread and butter. He's a good defensive defenseman, but he's not Chris Tanev. So he's sort of extremely high end depth. He's a guy who will make their second pairing a lot better than it was. And, you know, make their third pairing extremely good compared to other third pairings. But, you know, for, for a guy that's not really a tippity top guy, a guy who's never gotten Norris votes, a guy who's, you know, in the, for lack of a better term, the hall of very good, a very good guy on expiring contract. They got a first and a lottery ticket and a, a 26 year old guy who's needs to stay healthy and really needs to put a full season together. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a trade. They got something that well, no, nobody boom, walked for nothing. Boom is underwhelmed, but wagging his tail. It's actually not my tail. That's wagging. there is a dog. Oh, yeah, in the room. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, Darren Drager posting uh, for what it's worth. Expect Miramanov to be signing an extension. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And I don't know um, whether that's just because the Flames have expressed interest. Or I'm betting they the would, player. right? It's, this player would is more valuable to us if he's not a UFA <laughs> in, yeah. in in a month from now. So yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And, and so <laughs> what this yes, player, his agent is is it uh, Gold Star again? Yes, he's uh, yeah. possible another agent, Milstein Kuzmenko's yeah. agent, uh, agent of the stars, Dan Milstein. So. <laughs> There's there's connective tissue there. This kind of makes some sense now. Yeah, and that was Zadorov's agent too. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, Connie, yeah. So you won't have to. He'll, he should know the number by heart then. I know. Yeah, it's on speed dial. Just going to your recent calls. The I, I think the the re response is going to be, and eh, it's a little light. But what is the difference between, let's say, the guy that Vegas was going to put on waivers to make room? For Hannafin, a first and a B prospect versus this guy, a first and a second. Is it much? I mean, you hit with that second. Oh, sure. I, like it, it kind of feels comparable to me. And it's like if you told me it was two seconds and a conditional third for 10, I'd be like, oh, two seconds. There's nobody. Well, this player was a second two years ago. Like, mm -hmm. it's just the beauty is going to be in the eye of the beholder when it comes to prospects and and again he's 26 it's not a normal thing i would tweet he's not a prospect that's probably wrong he's a very unique outlier of a prospect slash project at this point where does he fit in I'm, I'm just thinking now with all of these players going out what's the average age in that flames locker room going to be so that blue line got young right away didn't it at this point it's just is it just easier for everybody to learn russian like <laughs> You know, like at 26, uh, Cod Codry's 33, feeling older. Uh, Huberto's 30, Weger is 30. But he's in, he's a comparable to all the other guys in there. Rasmus is 27. That's the weird one, right? Hannafin and Rasmus Anderson, same age. Yeah. Doesn't seem right, does it? But they're both, uh, both 27. But, uh, no, listen, it, when you if you want to strip back so what did you expect what did you you can go pie in the sky but what did you think it was going to be first player Check. prospect yeah they didn't get a player they got a prospect i guess and instead of a player they got potentially a second round pick so it's a first a second and a guy and maybe the guy's Close. good or maybe the yeah. guy's it's yeah it's, this blue line is going to be fascinating next year. They got Joel Handley, who they claimed off waivers, who's under contract for next year. I would suggest that Gilbert and Osterley's deal is expiring. They are less uh, likely to be around than the new guy. Pahal's got another year left on his deal as well. Like Those are your guys battling it out. And If you're going to build a third pair, they may as well be really toolsy, intriguing talents that, if things click, can be more than a 6-7 and kind of what you're describing with the skill set of this guy who used to be a forward and can pile up points on a power play. And does it is this sort of the idea that you're you're you you got Joel uh you know Hanley? 
Hanley? Yep, yeah. Harley. Hanley. There's a Thomas Harley Harley's and a, a Joel one. Hanley yeah, yeah, from yeah. Dallas, and I always get confused. But you, you, you had Hanley, and he and Pahal kind of insulate your kids a bit. I mean, we yeah. saw Solovyov, we saw Kuznetsov. Maybe they both need more time. They're not ready yet. Maybe they just want to throw them in the deep end. And so you have the ability, like, if you have – if one of these guys comes in and camp and blows Pahal out of the water. Pahal's on a league men deal. You can wave him. You can park him as your seven. You can do a lot of things. Same with Hanley. So it, the idea is you're trying to hedge your bets a bit with some of these guys that haven't really played a lot of hockey at the NHL level. That kind of makes sense. I still think like, I have no idea who their centers are next year. I yeah. have no idea who plays with uh, in the top four next year, taking, uh, you know, assuming it's, you know, Uyghur, uh Anderson, and Shillington, and who else? Top three. I don't know who else is, but that that we know for sure. We kind of wondered what kind of a center, what's the what NHL body could be coming in that's going to help fill out the top six, the top nine, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. We know now that that's not happening. So yep. I do wonder if even before Friday, maybe not so much a forward, but we talked about a defenseman. I don't think. Mirmanov or any, I wonder if they do take one of these picks. If there's a, an opportunity to add a veteran guy, a veteran NHL with a guy for the rest of this season, even mm -hmm. to uh, to help out the coach and the kids and all of that. And I mean, they got plenty of wingers, so they don't need they don't need other guys. Uh, you would hope you'd hope fingers crossed. Now, now you could now you go and be a broker for somebody. You yeah. add a, a player if. It, Maybe and maybe it is pie this guy. Maybe there's a we, we'll move this defense when we need the roster space and we need the salary cap. Send him and a pick to Calgary for future considerations. It could that type of deal come up on Friday when teams are panicking to get uh, something in before the deadline? I don't know. Yeah, and look, let's say you get someone saying, "Look, I can use uh, half price." Enderman Japani, I'll get the, I'll throw you a second for that. You might just say, "Yeah, okay, well that's our fourth second. Let's go turn that into a defenseman with term mm -hmm. that's got a year or two that maybe he's a five on a contender that they just went and got a D and he can play as a four here for this year and next year. Just buy time for the kids, as, as, as Pike said. Like Very quickly, they have a lot of D prospects. They don't have a blue chipper, but they've got a lot of intriguing prospects. When you add Miramanov and Grish... Grushnikov <laughs> into the group that already had Solovyov and Kuznetsov. Holy fuck. Uh, know, and then lot. you think about Poirier's back to health. Rostevich in the O, uh, Moran, the second rounder from last year. Like This was a group that had no D prospects a year ago. And in the course of the last nine, 10 months, Pike, like there's a lot of pieces there. They aren't all going to hit, but the more you have, the more likely one of them will. Yeah. Also, just to jump in, guys, the, the other thing that uh, we need to keep an eye on is there may be some conditions on the first rounder as well that this could be a 2025 or 2026? Yes, we don't know what year it is. First round uh, pick is it pro top ten protected? I'm sure there's all that sort of stuff. Um, so this could be a thing where it's you, you got the first, but you talked about it, Pinder. Your kid's 15. You know he's somewhere. You know on Pornhub under his <laughs> under his Jesus. under his sheets, trying not to get caught by not, mom dude. and dad. Um, it probably makes sense in the big picture, but that's real big picture, right? You're talking five-year, 10-year plan mm -hmm. if it's a 2026 first rounder. 2026 is way down the road. Like it's way so far down. down the road. I mean, uh, so I, I, I wouldn't, if they've got two already <laughs> so dead. I'll this summer, yeah. I don't have a problem with them trying to get some 2025 exposure. I think it's a better class, but six is so far out. Like it, it's a, literally a 15-year-old is what you're talking about. A lot and, of things uh, happen. Vegas just announced the trade, or at least they posted a beautiful graphic of uh, of Noah Hannafin in a not in any way photoshopped, of course, uh, jersey. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing so, that this summer. I, guess, so. I, 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 I totally agree with what, what Dean said in terms of the idea of being a broker. I would say not necessarily like the Flames have a, have oodles of cap space, but you're going into this draft with, for lack of a better term, a crap ton of draft picks and flexibility and roster holes and the cap is going up to 87.5 or so this year. And the, there's a lot of teams that have already spent that money. Uh, I want to point to you, yep. Edmonton, but you know who you are. Yeah, so the Connor Flames, Brown's bonus eats up most of that 
gains there. Yeah. Yeah. And with the, with the moves the flames have made, you know, if Connor's area gets, I think the flames have ended up getting entirely out of LTI space. Now uh, they're well under the cap. They're not going to owe any money or they're not going to need any, any kind of shenanigans to stay under 83, five. So uh, assuming Zari gets his bonus this year, it's not going to count against next year. They're going to have maximum cap space to wheel and deal. And they're going to have the ability to go to the draft and do a lot of different things including potentially taking advantage of teams that are capped out and need someone to take their overpaid second or third line center. So I think there'll be some options available to them. I don't think they've really hemmed themselves in, in terms of reducing their own flexibility. Uh, but it would have been nice if they got a better prospect than to Neil Miramata. This is, and again, there's all kinds of, companies and and groups out there that do scouting work and they watch and they have their, here's what we see with this player. This is from, uh, I believe this is the one from McKean's hockey talking about Daniil Miramanov to say that Miramanov's career thus far has been a whirlwind would be an understatement. Not only did he bounce around North America and Eastern Europe chaotically for a number of years, he was originally a winger and only recently switched to full-time defense despite some expected growing pains The returns to date have been very impressive overall, and you can tell that he's still just scratching the surface of how good he can become once he fully adjusts to his new position. His heavy shot is a serious weapon, especially with the offensive instincts that carried over from his time as a forward. He uses his strength and reach well to win defensive battles. Miramanov has an abundance of remaining unmined upside, and it's exciting to think of how good the final product could be after a few more years of stable, focused growth within the same organization. And that was uh, that was pulled from one of the, uh, you know, r- ranking the Vegas prospects. Here's who they are and what they are. And they had him fifth on the Vegas depth chart. So that's and that's cool. not un- that's not unlike what we've seen out there. Is here's a guy switched switched positions, had an injury, coming back. He's, he's, he's putting up numbers at the American Hockey League. Big shot, and maybe there's something there. You heard the yep. same thing with Grushnika. It's I was saying earlier, Pike, before you came back on, that there's kind of a common thread there with some of these players. The Brostevich in the in the Lindholm deal, certainly Grushnikov, and now, now this guy. There's maybe a little, give it a little bit of time, see if there's something there. And I think they've done a, I think they've done a pretty good job on the defensive side, whether it's Husker or however it is, they're they're not unable to develop defense. I think they've got to be pretty Case happy. With Shillington. Shillington, Rasmus Anderson has has even uh, even the last few years i mean joe sorelli down at the uh joe sorella down at the ahl level uh, is working with the blue liners pretty much consistently you know under mitch love and under uh you know uh the the current coach trent cull and you know the, the guys didn't set the world on fire but i i also would, would say that you know solovyov and kuznetsov didn't look out of place and i think they've done a pretty good job mm-hmm. sort of getting those guys ready so if if you're saying hey let's just build those guys up with different options to sort of give them different types of players to work with. Mm. I think, I think that's not a bad philosophy. Uh, I believe our pal Frank uh, tweeted out yeah, the full we got the condition. Yeah. It's, so it's weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jack, if you can go get the last Sarah Valley <laughs> trade that, that will, now we know more about um, which first round. So it, this is it, why it, this thing took all night to come, uh, to all come. All the through. conditions is what we were told, right? Ryan, the multi, yeah. like, and Pen- we're talking about. Pender, Pender's in conditions. the doghouse now because of the conditional first round pick, I bet. I'm in it now. No, I remain in the doghouse. That's come on, Pike. You know better. So, yeah, we we've got a full trade to announce. So the Calgary Flames have just treated as uh, tweeted as well. Uh, it is a 2025 first round pick. That's conditional. The condition being, <laughs> if Vegas trades <laughs> their Kramer. first, uh, then. It moves to 2026. How does it like how do you pull that off? How do you trade your first rounder and then say, but oh, still have it. it to trade it? It's I mean, it's brilliant, really. Yeah, and and look, maybe that's <laughs> a veteran GM working over a new guy a bit because I think it would be pretty easy to say we're not taking a 2026, it's gotta be 2025, wouldn't it? Trade your 26 yeah. to someone else. I don't know. Anyway, continue. I jumped on you there, but no, it's all right. And we already know the conditions on the third. If they win a round, it goes to a second this year. Uh, excuse me. No, they have to win the round this year. They don't have a second this year. It'll be a second next year. And the Flyers for taking Retention half of half, half, fifth round pick. So I, I, we've said this. They, they've now added two firsts. They've added 
two seconds, two to four thirds, depending on conditions, a fifth. Uh, like Connie's got a ton of picks here. They've added some toolsy, but definitely not blue chip prospects along the way. And they haven't yet taken a top two prospect out of any of these organizations. Uh, those are the pros and the cons of the full body of work, which we've been waiting for. That is six of the seven free agents. We expect the Shillington deal. He'll stay here. They didn't get anyone's top prospect for any of these five guys they've traded. No, they didn't. Uh, and not not two or three. They didn't get a top three guy, really, yeah. out of any of these teams. Uh, yeah, where Brustevich uh, would be, I don't know. But yeah, they, they certainly never got to the point where they could take the best prospect or two or three from any of the teams. And in fairness, they weren't, I mean, they're not trading away Austin Matthews, an impending UFA. Hannafin's a good player, but he's not a Norris guy. And Lindholm, already Vancouver is finding out that what is he today? What was he yesterday? What might he be tomorrow? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was a lot. There was quality for sure, but it was, I think we really got into the quantity part of how much, the flames were going to be selling Tyler to Foley. You get, you always get, you see, I think your stock's always a little higher than the people, either the, the team that you cheer for, the team that you follow on a, on a, on a regular basis. But I, I when you were saying McCrimmon, he's got to be, a, of course you're trading that pick now because he's got salary cap space if he needs it. And he's mm. got a first round pick in 2025 if he needs it. Never mind 2014. He's got the 2024 one as well. They didn't get even Jake get that Gensel. one. Uh, I'm reading the conditions. They double protected their their first rounder. Uh, Explain. I, I'll just read from the from the Flames press release. Condition: uh, In the event Vegas possesses their own first round choice in the 2025 NHL draft on March 10th, 2024, and in the event Vegas's 2025 first round choice is not top 10. Then the Flames, uh, the, the Vegas shall convey their own first round pick to the Flames. In the event that Vegas does not possess their own first round choice uh, due to the above conditions, the Flames get their 2026 pick. So it's top 10 protected somehow. As well. Yeah. And they could trade it by Friday. That's top 10 protected in 25. It wouldn't be top 10 protected in 26 if it got there. That's a 15 year old. <laughs> That's that's yeah. this this is actually very impressive. Kelly like for McCrimmon, for knows McCrimmon I'm suggesting you're saying, yeah. I'm telling you, man, he's game recognized game. Yeah, he uh I, I look, we don't know what else was out there. It a first is a first. Does that mean does that mean that the flames can't do anything with it, that it has no value until of June not. of 2026? No, you can you can find ways to move that thing around, but it does feel like uh Vegas got the player that they wanted without and the other part of this too guys they didn't have to pay extra for signing to an extension right the whole thing was if they signed the yep. extension then maybe you get more and he might him. not but he still could sign an yeah. deal with vegas to your point right but he can still do it so that yeah. goes out the window and we can make something else clear too here dean if no hanovan goes to vegas doesn't extend and they get wiped by the Oilers in round one, Greg Conroy's won this deal. Yeah, yeah. They he's, got he's done 20 well some games sure. from Hannafin. Um, but, yeah, that, that definitely looked like a veteran GM working over a rookie GM when you read all the conditions. Yeah. <laughs> Just get the 24th if he cares so much about protecting the 25th. The 20, so 2024 he, yeah, one. Yeah, he keeps the 2024 one and essentially the 2025th one. Yeah, if he wants to. Now, here's the thing. Another team might get a deal done with them. Maybe they get the 2024 pick. I don't know. Like, it's possible that still mm -hmm. can be 2025, but I see what you're saying. If you leave yourself the option, why wouldn't you exercise? Why it? wouldn't you do it? Yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen that. If I've, I've still, never, I've never seen that. I haven't. I'm either. going to trade you this pick unless I unless use I it by Friday. Yeah. Unless I feel like giving it to someone else, I'll give you a pick at some point. The check's We've not seen it the opposite way. We're like, this picks in play in another trade. And if certain things happen, well, that's right. This yeah. might be needed. Like, if Florida finishes bottom 10 in the league, we're going to have to send you that 2026 pick, not the 2025 one, because the 2025 one is going to have to go to this guy because the 2024 one's not protected. And so this can, like, we've seen that. This is the opposite. If later I decide to trade it, this one doesn't count. <laughs> 
you give himself a little 48 hour window, you know, just in case I want yeah. to, maybe I want to go out and use this to 2025 pick. Them up. Where are they at with uh, cap space, Pike? Are they in a spot where they could add another impact player with double retention? Uh, Vegas. Yeah. They, uh, I think they had something like, I think they had four, seven or something before. Well, this. Only one and they used like one and a quarter. So they got three, something left. And what do they do uh, with what's his name on the blue line? I thought I had seen Martinez that they did something with Martinez today because well, he's hurt. I don't know if they put him on LTIR. Or yeah, so they can still yeah. LTIR him. So yeah, they're going full. They're going balls out for Gensel. They're going full Vegas. Too. Yeah, they're going. Jeez, if they get Gensel, my God. And then not everyone be will. Uh, going back. Everyone's going to be fully healthy as of uh, the twenty third of April, and uh, you know Bob's your uncle. Yeah, Martinez injured, not on the LTIR. Yeah, so that's a move they can make if they want to open up more cap space, but only if he's not healthy by the end of the year. If he's healthy by the end of the year, there still has to be room for him to come back, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so this is, Frank, essentially coming to the realization that we are. Interesting that Vegas has stipulated that the first could slide to 2026. It wants full opportunity or optionality, optionality yeah. to trade it's 24 and 25 first round picks at this deadline. So yeah, he's this uh deadline. It's cake and eat it too for this deadline. You're still and getting you know the what? pick. It's not you're not getting it's not like you're not getting a first. You're getting a first. You this know what? You know when and if it's protected. Marsh so's 33. Carlson's 31. Petrangelo's 34. Braden McNabb's 33. Like Yeah. It's their next two years. That's their window. Why the fuck not? Eat you, you gotta eat your greens and get make sure you get your steps in every day so that you're still around in 2026 when they draft the kid at maybe first or second overall, and then the kid makes the NHL and then he's good. You know, you gotta have a little bit of patience. Well, you guys were making fun of me when I said it, but like when you took the third from Vancouver in 2026, like that's longer than a lot of NHL GM shelf lives. And that's not mentioning anything about Connie, but like it, there's a very good chance a lot of GMs, GM and today won't be with the teams they're with now by the time that player oh, arrives or doesn't yeah, arrive yeah. or you realize it's not a player. Like three years is a long time when in three years you get to start the clock at 17 years old. There's another point I was going to make there, but I don't really recall what it is. Now. I have a final thought. So you it's so much to absorb, that. you know, for my, it's been such a day for me. I've, I've been so All much right. talking. My toe. Haven't had dinner. At... I... You're this wearing my dinner. toe situation. I, I saw it. It's an ambrosian. You have you have my con you have my uh my thoughts yeah. with you boom that does not seem Preach. especially you, I I heard you tell the story about stopping your toe oh and no. every All part things. of me hurt listening to that yeah. no I'll say this if this helps screw Edmonton we're we're all I happy with that right yeah yeah hundred percent we're all fine with that I think a Stanley Cup at some point in Calgary Flames fans' lives before they pass would be wildly celebrated. But if somehow, some way, the Edmonton Oilers with the best player we'll ever watch with our two eyes in our lives don't win a Stanley Cup, that deserves a parade in the city as well. I mean, Wayne, Wayne Gretzky won some Stanley Cups, though. Many people did not see him with adult eyes that were watching. Oh, right okay. Now, but yes, you're right. So the here's, here's the other thing. And I, again, we're, we're absorbing it and going through it. I think like everybody that's watching right now mm -hmm. that's in the, in the, it's, uh, Conroy, this, they got host. Here's the thing. And I'm not, I'm not saying me. It's just what I, I was saying it on the show with you, right? Be prepared for this to, based on what they are getting in offers for Noah Hannafin, be prepared to be underwhelmed that this is not going to be a home run, which is why we kept hearing, well, they're maybe going to try and sign them. It's like, well, do we take this or maybe are we better off signing a 27 year old, give them 8 million a year or whatever it takes. Maybe. And I checked in this morning and it's, uh, I was told it's quiet, nothing going on. Um, so I, th if he kept them, and didn't trade them. People would riot in the streets. He got a first, maybe a second and a player for him. He wasn't going to sign. If the player's a player and you get a first and a second with him, that's a nice haul. But there's lots of ifs in there because we don't even know what year the first is. We don't know that it is a second and we don't know if the guy's a player yet. Well, we'll know what by Friday at uh, one o'clock if Kelly trades that. Uh, 
Is that how it works? So it's a 2025 it, unless he uses it before on, yeah. on before Friday. Okay. If if he still has the pick as of Sunday, if he didn't move it for some reason on Friday or Saturday, for some reason it's the tenth is the day specified, not the ninth. If he still that has it on Sunday, what the hell? Like it hasn't given it away for Magic Beans or anything by then. But we and really it's not need top to take, ten. Yeah, we got to take McCrimmon's phone away. Don't trade it. Twenty twenty five, please. And yeah, it's going to be protected. I, mean, I got to hey. update my damn first round conditions flow chart now. Oh, geez. Thank, th- thanks, Craig. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, it's that's a lot. Probably means you, uh, it's a late tuck in for you, Pike, if you got to work on that. Well, he's got to do it now because you'll forget about it and you'll get it wrong. Pros are pros, Dean. We talked about his book coming out. If Don't you procrastinate, want thorough, Pike. No stone unturned. Okay, yeah. we, we we have no idea what kind of conditional shenanigans he'll get up to tomorrow, so I need to make sure my notes are up to date. Uh, are you going to be at the Dome on Friday? Part of the excitement? Oh, I will. Yes. I, uh, we're going to play a game called What's There Left to Do? Uh, yeah. It could be... I, I, I don't know what to expect. Maybe we'll see further moves. They have stuff they could be doing. They have stuff they could they not got be wingers. doing. got wingers! <laughs> He's got his 2024 homework done. Does he start working on 2025? Okay, so there's even another condition. Are you ready for another condition? Oh, my God. You're going to be killing me. This uh, third that can turn into a second. Yeah, if they went around. In the event that Vegas advances to the second round of the 2024 playoffs this year. Yeah, they went around. They will send their second in 2025. Yeah. If it's a third, it's in 2024. So they don't have the second this year, right? So it's yeah. it would have no kidding. It took forever. In the event that Vegas does not possess their own first round choice, Vegas will go in twenty twenty six. It's getting hard. I'll tell you, it's getting hard to be a GM all of a sudden. Salary no, retention. It's not that hard. We could do it. And I keep looking at him with a face like, "Are you fucking kidding me? You think this is easy?" Do you watch how quickly these people get old in these jobs? This is one of the hardest jobs in the world. Well, I, I, I play poker with Kelly probably. McCrimmon. He's got 15 conditions tied on you. You're walking out of there with toilet paper on your shoe thinking you did okay. Yeah, this is a good point. Julia McKenzie. Now, if Calgary gets the 2025 first round pick from Vegas, it won't be subjected to the conditions of the Sean Monahan trade that was made in the summer of 2022, where Another. Montreal. There's the flow chart, Pike. <laughs> <laughs> but again, ah. they, they could potentially have three non top 10 first round picks in that year. And Montreal gets uh, the highest of the Calgary or, or yeah, the, the Calgary or, or now unless let's, it's let's, the first overall. Yeah. I guess the one one other thing that we've kind of glossed over is that the condition on the big pick, the third to a second, feels attainable. For in the Dallas, it's not trade, Edmonton. It feels very attainable, right, especially it, when you talk about them buying more. The Dallas trade was they got to get to the Cup final, and if they don't, there's no yeah. pick. And Here Vegas, at least it, you know, it dips to a third, win one round. That you have to feel at least semi confident. That this this is a, a deal that could net you a first and a second round pick at some point in the future. Yeah, again, is if they line up against Edmonton, you're nervous. But if anyone else, the way that they're adding and doing the Vegas cap space things, you, you'd think that they would be favorites today if they stepped onto the ice against Vancouver, not knowing what Vancouver is going to do before Friday, and certainly against LA, who have had a very roller coastery season. Los Angeles, I should say, if that's what I did say. They did not spend what's what's nine times eight? Seventy two million. Seventy two million on on Elias Lindholm. They no. did not spend sixty four million on Noah Hannafin. They tried to spend sixty on him. They Seven tried, million. yeah, they tried. But like I said to you earlier, they they I think escaped some some potential horrendous contracts moving forward, which is also you look at the seven UFAs. You know what they didn't do? Lock up aging guys on a mediocre team. They said no to that. Yeah, that's important. Uh, if 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 you believe, if you're the general manager right now, and you believe in your pro scouts and your amateur scouts, and the moves that he's made make scream that he does so far, then 
okay, we're, we're about to see if they're as good as he thinks they are because they have a lot of bullets. They have a lot of, they brought in guys, you know, uh, the, the press release basically involves Craig talking about how much they they've liked the potential of Mirmanov and, and he was a guy they yep. targeted is, you know, very much similar to, you know, Grushnikov. Grush- so Grush- we're, <laughs> we're about to see if, uh, if his confidence in his people is well-founded because they're going to have a lot of bullets in the next few years. God, there's some tools on this kid and, and that'll be the thing. If Connie's going to hang his hat on player evaluation, being the super scout GM, Maybe both these D men are way better than everyone thinks right now. Like That's, the guys that write prospect reports for websites are very good. GMs are better, or they'd be the GMs. Uh, now, some GMs aren't great at talent evaluation. Some just trust their pro scouts. But Connie's been the guy on the scene the last four or five years. Well, probably right back to special advisor days, Dean. He's at all these events. Oh, sure. These are not yeah, players. Yeah. He's trying to like, where are the reports? I need to get familiar. Is he? No, 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 no. This guy's, I remember what happened this draft year. And then I saw him at this tournament. Like if these guys turn out to be players, these are great deals. It's just that the NHL consensus on these guys, or at least the people that write about prospects probably aren't as glowing as Connie's. And the point you make is if they don't, if they don't win, that's a first round pick. If they don't resign Hannafin, and maybe that gets done here, maybe it's already done. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but you 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 got you got the picks you needed to get. You needed a first. Yeah. And then you needed something, whether it was a player or a pick. If it's a second, all right. But it does feel like that's especially with some of the the stipulations that they got put in. Jeez. It's not an easy trade. You're still trading a first at some point. But today, uh. It's not a. It, I feel like Vegas feels pretty good about it, much like Dallas and Jim Neal. I think felt pretty good about the Tanev deal. Here's uh, Eric Francis quoting Craig Conroy, who has just met with the media. It was extremely important to us to ensure this deal featured a first round draft pick and a third round pick that has the potential to become a second round selection. Additionally, We've been tracking Daniil the past couple of seasons, and we're pleased to have been able to ensure he was a part of this trade. He has good size at six foot four, with good skating ability and speed. He commands a heavy shot, makes quick plays, and we're excited about his offensive upside. At the AHL level, he's been dominant in creating offense as a defenseman, and we anticipate that to translate to the NHL, a.k.a. Craig saying, I think he's a player. Yeah, yeah. And you hope he obviously you hope he's right. You hope he's right about all these all these guys that were further down the depth chart, conceivably, on these teams that he's dealt with, mm-hmm. but found some diamond in the rough that was maybe not maybe and maybe they knew what they had. It sounded like with Dallas that they spent a second round pick on Grush the guy. They I think they kind of knew, but they still kept their top four or five guys. So that uh, that makes things a little bit easier. Um what no, I I was gonna I meant to take a screen grab and give it the the numbers for this guy. They talk about the the numbers at the American League. I wanted to toss that out there here for you. They just disappeared him off the page on cap friendly. So the yeah, because he'll be a flame now. Yeah, he'll be a flame. <laughs> jump um, z- zero and four in the a- in the NHL this year, and just do uh, the AHL numbers because we know uh, he won't have anything in the NHL. So yeah, only twenty nine. All right, uh, let's do last three seasons: 21, 22, uh, 11 Don't goals. give me the years. You're, it's too many numbers. Just tell me games and points. Uh, forty four, and fifty three. Forty yeah. and fifty three. Twenty two and thirty one. Six and five. So he's and in the K four seasons ago, yeah, he's over a half point a game as a defenseman, or he may have been a forward at that point. Crazy, uh, yeah, Jesus, that's the VHL, it's the, oh, the AHL no, of Russia. No. Sochi, Sochi, he's played it in Sochi at 29 points. Sochi's the K. The oh, there he is. Okay. Prior. I was looking the wrong yeah. year, yeah, Got that's that, not bad. Like... Tools, he's... so again, what does it mean? It means he's a good AHL point producer. We don't know what that what that means, but there is again, there's there's something there that would give you hope that okay, now go to work with it and see if if it can uh, realize itself in the NHL level. Yeah, and very the- quickly, it was reported as soon well, not soon, uh, shortly after his name was reported that there's an expectation a deal gets done here. 
it would be quite something if this player who is slated to become a group six UFA this summer walked, uh, there is an expectation amongst insiders. He will sign. Yeah. Drager put that out, uh, half an hour ago there, right? We brought it up. Correct. Here. Yeah. And we've mentioned it, but just I'm seeing in the comments and just to remind people like that I'm seeing people panicking. Like, no, 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 no. There's the expectation a deal will be done immediately here. Well, there you go. Whew. I wasn't sure we were going to get in. I have opinions on this, but they have a lot of conditions, Dean. I don't know. I don't know if I can handle more conditions. Yeah. And when it was all said and done, fellas, if it was really, so, really tough to put your finger on exactly what Noah Hannafin's half decade in the organization was, probably explains the return. Uh, which is yeah, also maybe. hard to put your finger on. No? Yeah. What? Well, what is he? That's what he, we ended up kind of. Well, he's good at this. He's not so good at that. He's very good at this. Yeah, not so good at that. He's definitely he's, two or a three, but not a four, but not a. I one. feel like he'll be good maybe in three. Vegas. I feel like everyone he'll be good looks there. good there. So, yeah. so to, to summarize the the defenseman market that the Flames created, uh, the best of the three defensemen offensively got them a first and a third that could turn into a second and a 26 year old with potential. Uh, their shutdown top four D got them a second and a conditional third, maybe, and a, a another like a 20 year old potential shutdown D. And then their five, the rush, the the tall Russian guy. Got them a third and a fifth. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's sort of a sliding. You know what it is? You can... It's like my goddamn basement. We got <laughs> stuff all over the place. Do we know what yeah. we've got here? Can we? Some of it's nice, I bet. I mean, there's probably nice? some good stuff here, but there's just there's stuff everywhere. I don't even know what we got. So I, I guess just do we? Is it, are we ballpark? Do we know who Vegas will play round one? It's got to be. Fairly cut and dried, isn't it? I no, guess because they just card, fell into a wild card today. And all of a sudden, Edmonton's closed the gap on Vancouver have hit the skids. I, I think it looked very clear two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. It now does not because LA's got their shit together. Vegas hit the skids. Vancouver's slow down and Edmonton remains very good. Avoid Edmonton at all costs is the uh, what we need the Vegas Golden Knights to ah, to hell with that. It'd make it even better. And a reminder that uh, next Thursday... Noah Hannafin and the Vegas Golden Knights visit the Calgary Flames. Oh, my God. Yeah, he went all the way across the continent to get another flight, didn't he? Going to go over there. <laughs> there go over here. Oh, no, you know. We knew he was going to a tax-free state, boys. We just had the wrong one, sir. the wrong God one. Damn it. Um, think we got to figure these names out, too. Oof, too many new keep... Brust, Brustovich and Miramat. Itches and Mir A lot of letters. Poor Depot. Oof. He's going to be sewing name bars for hours. Jesus. So how how many of these names do we expect Rhett to get correct this week? Oh boy. Ooh, that's a low number. Yeah. Well, he came on and uh my battery's gonna die. Does he realize that you, you if you plug things in, they work? Like do you think he's just waiting for the toast to pop and it isn't plugged in? The toaster don't work. He did appear. That's an upgrade on the tan he did appear. Yeah, emergency he did appear. podcast. Bought us some but, time. Um, and in fairness, Pike, he said he had ordered a uh, multi-meat shawarma and a pizza. So I'm guessing it's meat coma right now, too. A hundred percent. And when he got home after finishing said meat shawarma, he realized he'd ordered the pizza to the shawarma shop. So he had to go back to it. Just, just, just a, out of curiosity, and our friends in the chat can play along, too. Who here has actually eaten dinner already yet? I've, I, I've I, had my apple. I I, I shoveled some food in my face that was uh, my my wife made dinner and then this all broke and I basically after I did my radio hit ran crammed a bunch of food in my mouth and then just came back here and then Pinder summoned me again so uh, <laughs> I ate I don't know if I ate well or properly I almost choked on my dinner uh, because of how poorly I was coordinating that part these of my are life. the sacrifices if you want to be a hard hitting journalist and reporter like Ryan Pike you must make. You should have seen Dean when his food arrived as the Lindholm deal broke. He said, I'm ready to go. He says, yeah, my food just arrived. Dude. My food's here. 15 Can't... minutes, 20. I don't want to eat quick. Well, we've got the, we've got the, the food. No, we got the full deal. We've got the full deal. We can go do it. I'm having my gnocchi. It just right now. arrived. It's it just warm. Can't have it. And I, I said to you, you can't leave it because Warner was there. He'll eat oh, the whole God. thing on you. This is true. That's fair. That's fair. 
I, you know I was sad one... I didn't. Go, I was sad I didn't go on that trip until that trade broke, and I'm like, okay, this would have been worse for everybody. Yeah, and you know what? T's and P's. We keep forgetting Yoni Yermo, or whoever Yurko? the other guy is. Yur- Yurko or Yermo? Yermo. It's the guy we keep. We forget about him. In the uh, was that the Vancouver deal? Yeah. To be fair, he may have forgotten about us too. So you know, I saw we're talking funny. about Kuzmenko and Grushnikov and all these other. Guys. I I keep forgetting about your sorry your what's the first name Yoni Yoni sorry Yoni Yoni Ortio Yoni Ortio forever a flame well to everybody I mean geez we had a lot of people in here today. I've never seen anything like this it's got to be an error Jack Jack we can't have nearly thirteen thousand people still watching this drivel I feel like we gotta keep going to. to I mean, could you have any card tricks? Do you juggle? I got a fridge full of beer. I'm not going anywhere if this so, shit show wants to keep on, rolling. So on deadline day, is the plan that Dean's just going to do puzzles in the background and as trades break, he'll oh, wander out that. from his puzzles? My puzzle game, I've not had a lot of puzzle time. It's been busy over here. I busy feel like you need here. a good puzzling day. We'll get you on the back. I know, but, you know, but here's the other thing too. The weather starts to turn warm. S- s- spring and summer is not good puzzling time. Yeah, and someone's got prime like, time for puzzling. Dog shit in the backyard, right? Yeah, yeah. No sponsors. Pike, yeah, we joined us. Thanks to it, it was a you know I don't even know what we call this. So. Emergency podcast. Emergency podcast. Is that what it is? How's Jack yeah, doing? I'm, is he all right? I'm worried about him. Did we, did we feed Jack? Oh, I'm good. I've been eat. I've been eating this whole You've been time. Eating the whole time, eh? What'd you I eat? Dashed. Did you dog dash? Uh, did you yeah, the girlfriend made me some some pasta, oh, DoorDash, um, some pizza. I've been hanging out this whole time. You guys have been doing all the hard work, and I've been clicking a couple buttons. Oh, good for you, dude. Jack's professional. He, he's yeah. got his beat. What kind of uh, what kind of pasta? What you get? Some red sauce, the, or the gabagoo. What are we doing? The mozzarella. Just a uh, a pepperoni. A pepperoni. Your pepperoni pasta? Pepperoni pasta. You know, you oh, hear about it all the time, pasta. Ryan. <laughs> Is it a different word that you wanted to use? Cannelloni? Pepperoni. Tortellini? Rigatoni? Spaghetti? Andrea Barniani? Fettuccini? Might be time to go. I'm starving now. <laughs> Good night, everybody. God bless you, Pike.